Is this thing back? Oh, we're back. A. Hey. How long till you get kicked out, homie? Believe it or not, they've had guests do crazy shit, and they it took them a while to kick them out. Me, I'm the most boring guest they've ever had. Like, this is the first day we chilled. It was just now, by accident. Because usually everyone's just in their rooms, and I kind of like that. Yeah, I love chill, motherfuckers. You know, all my life, I've loved people who are nothing like me. And I got like some self-hatred, I think. But if I was with loud people, I think I'd throw fucking fists. You know what I mean? If I was with like my, my kind of energy. But more quiet people make me quiet. I love that shit. You get older in life, you get way more about uh, peace and quiet, you know? Every year is like, I need more quiet, more quiet. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird. I'm old. You know how I know I'm old? I don't catch colds. I just get cold and the sniffles for like two days. And then like I can't see straight and it feels like I have hay fever. And then it goes away. It's like not a real cold. It's not a full cold. Like when I was young, I used to get full colds. Now it's just there to ruin... 48 hours and that's it and it's like what the fuck i kind of want a real cold just to like you know this this shit that comes and goes is so annoying mm. when is nina coming on stream uh as soon as i when i'm done in this weekend i'm definitely gonna have nina on the stream and we're gonna uh argue and all that but this weekend i've got some stuff to do and then I gotta set up this room better. Uh, I hate that because I'm like, I feel like this cold will come back in a week. You know? I felt fine yesterday, but crazy. Merc, don't ever talk like a fucking snitch in my chat. I'll ban you so fast. You guys been with me for a while to talk weird like that. And it's not like I hold back information. Like, I ramble for hours about that stuff. So it's like, don't bait me when I'm tired. If I'm rambling, I'm in control. But if I'm tired, I'll say something stupid. I've had one real workout and I think tonight I might have another because I have a bunch of pent up energy and yeah I'm gonna get pretty fit this year uh, it's weird when I say that because like um like, my heart used to race when I said I'm getting in crazy, you know, I'm getting in crazy good shape. Because I go pretty extreme. But I just got to remember, that's not me anymore. Now I just have to be, you know, good. But, you know, I used to really be like, oh, I'm getting in shape now. And I would take things a little too far. And that was, like, traumatizing, you know. Like, it's supposed to be about health as well, you know. Yeah. No, the best part about living here is I can randomly go live like this even when I don't feel like it, you know. 
It's like I don't gotta worry about some dude walking in naked and you know, like I can hear them come down and they respect my privacy. They're not you know how like brothers don't a brother will never respect your privacy, but like strangers will. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta start TikToking. Yeah. But I always leave it for YouTube first and then chop it up for TikTok and YouTube will be tomorrow. I thought it was Friday today. I'm like, oh shit. But it's so cool. I don't have to worry about that shit. Like, I don't even know the guys I'm paying. I just know one of them and he's doing everything for me and, you know. Like, no, there, nothing in my life ever feels better than feeling like I'm at work. Dude, if you do content, you know what I'm saying. If you make, if you create things, you know what I'm saying. People get lost in it, you know, because they think they're just chilling with a camera. And it's like, no, dude, we've got a mission. So I'm stoked. I'm glad that these guys... I don't think I even want to treat them like buddies. I'm, I'm going to treat them like, hey, let's get the clips, bro. Let's get to, like, for some reason, things go right when you're ruthless. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm hmm. Fucking love this bean bag, bro. It is actually 1500 bucks. I just checked. This thing costs 1500 bucks and nobody is using it. Dude, I always wondered, I'm like, do I get a hard bed? Because I love sleeping on the floor. Should I get a hard bed for my spine? Because I wake up better. But then sometimes I want soft. Dude, you want a beanbag to sleep on. My, your spine is perfect on a beanbag. You think it's wonky and shit, but... It, the beanbag fills up your arch like it's fucking you in the ass. The beanbag fills up the arch. It doesn't push it. It doesn't push your vertebra off you. It fills up the crevices. So the vertebra are actually straight. Uh, I wonder if I I wonder if I'm telling the truth right now or if I'm just talking stupid. There's no way, but like any which way I lay on this beanbag is it feels like zero tension on my back. No wonder it's 1500. Yeah. Can't explain to you the level of comfort. Like, cause I just opened the curtain. I'm like, I'm going to chill here for a bit. And I just saw this thing and I'm like, Oh, this stupid beanbag takes up so much room. I just laid down on it, haven't gotten off, spent nine hours sleeping on it, the most I've ever slept in my life. And dude, you could parachute position, you could do any position and just go to bed, dude. Like, I've never in my life, because I always said, do well, for the waking up process, do I want to be in bed with my phone in the morning? Or do I want to be upright on a PC? Or maybe, what if I got like a lazy boy? So I was like looking at lazy boys. Dude, if you want to be chilling at home, it takes up a lot of space though. But if you want to be chilling at home, right? But also get a text message to go out where you, you roll out of bed quickly. It's the beanbag, dude. The beanbag is like... You don't have to commit to being lazy. You can get off this thing. You know what I mean? But a bed is like, sometimes you're just like, oh, I'll just go to bed. I have a little nap. And Naps are so gay. Like, that's such an old man thing to do. Naps are depression, bro. But beanbags is like awake. Dude, today, I would not be able to nap because I felt like I'm going to miss out on this beanbag experience. And why I make this such a big deal is it's traumatic to go 28 years of your life not realizing how comfortable a fucking beanbag is. I thought it'd be filled with something annoying or something. I don't know what the fuck's in it, but it's like you're on a cloud, like you're fucking Michelangelo painting. And... 
and you think it's like going to be a sexual thing, it's not. Zero sexual. You don't get hard on it. You don't have sexual thoughts. It's like this innocent comfort. It's not like you don't want to share the beanbag. Like you could have a hug, right? You could chill with someone, but you don't want to share the beanbag when you're on it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, I spent my whole life using sofas and something about a couch that I hate, man. I hate the fucking couch, bro. I've never felt more rich in my life, like I'm a billionaire, than fucking laying on a beanbag. Why it's a big deal to me is I know I have to get a bed in here and I'm coping. Like, I know I got to do the grown-up thing. And I know I'm just going to stay out there with the fucking beanbag all day. And then I'll be thinking, like, yo, why is my bed in the spot of the beanbag? <clears throat> I'm so fucking comfortable on the beanbag, dude. I, I'm looking forward to tonight's sleep. This Tonight's the first night I sleep in the beanbag in my room, though. I'm looking forward to this because I'm like, am I going to sleep on my side or my, I never sleep on my back because I always think someone's going to punch me in my sleep. So I'm, you know, I always have one shoulder covering my chin when I sleep like this. It's so weird like this because I always think I'll be attacked on the beanbag. Fucking kill me, bro. Like I could sleep on my back and the heat distribution on the beanbag is different. It's like. Here's the best part of a beanbag, right? Uh, I guess this is for taller guys. If you're short, you don't get what I'm saying. No matter how big your bed is, right? It's never enough for a tall guy. Like, to feel happy, you stretch your legs and you feel like, oh, you have four more feet of bed. That is the most comfortable you can be as a tall guy. And it's like, and trust me, I've bought custom beds. I've done everything and it's never enough bed. But in the beanbag, first of all, it's bigger than me. I think it's eight feet. And second of all, it it's too much, bro. It doesn't look like too much, but it's too much. It's like because your legs are in a wonkier upright position, it feels like 10 beds. Can't explain it. It's just like. Yeah, it's not like your my the, you know how your feet hang off a, a bed. I'm having the opposite problem, right? Where my feet can never find the edge, can never find the edge of the fucking beanbag. Is there an edge to a beanbag? Because it's not a sphere, but it's definitely not a flat surface. And I don't. I'm not the type of guy. I always found it kind of gay, but all obviously it's not gay. I always found it kind of gay to spread out when you sleep, like a homosexual. But on the beanbag, look. I'm literally fucking wide open, dude. That's nothing of what my energy's like. I've never once in my life done this at home, chilling alone. Like, completely. Matter of fact... I could go wider and you know how boys are like, oh, I'm going to do the splits. I don't like it. It's fucking hurting my mind. You don't feel like you'll do the splits. You just feel like I'm on a fucking beanbag and I'm floating through the universe. And in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, I don't smoke weed. I had a sip of that White Claw. But I'm not an alcohol guy. I think I want to start doing edibles just to experience this beanbag. Because when I used to do edibles, I used to like look for a spot to become a, a fucking munchkin. And I'm thinking to myself like. What drug should I use on the beanbag? Like if I was going to have a. You know what I mean? Like this is the one time I want to do like. Maybe like LSD on a beanbag. It's insane dude. That foot looks like it's off the edge. But it's really not. It doesn't even get close to touching the ground. Because the beanbag is shaped differently. Right? Yeah, it's fucking huge. And it's angled so this side's higher than this side, which bothers you until you're on it. When you're on it, dude, like your legs, 
Think about it. Your legs are higher than your head. Wouldn't that rush the blood to your head? No, it doesn't. It's insane, dude. And look at that. This position is great. And this, like parachute. You can just sleep like this. And there's something about the beanbag that it conserves heat on your back. It just conserves heat. Like the only parts you'll feel cold is like fingertips and a bit of your toes, which I kind of like it. And it's just conserving this energy. I didn't know things like this existed, dude. I didn't know money buys happiness. For $1,500, you could be as happy as me if you just hit the link below at RazorsBeanBagStore.com. Thank you for coming to the stream. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is not a sponsored stream. I'll, but I would love to work with this fucking company. I love this company. Put me on a lie detector desk. This has got to be the greatest fucking money ever spent. Well, this was a gift, but if you bought a beanbag, this shit's fucking awesome, dude. Is that the real Matan? Am I saying it right? L wannabe Hitler. Why would he say that? He said, shut up, cracker, kill Albanians. Okay. Uh, now who's the, what, what, what do you mean? Albanians were with Hitler. In World War Two. Uh, that guy's crazy. <clears throat> You know who hated Hitler? Slavic people. <laughs> Is the Book of Solomon legit? Um... Listen to my Muslims and Christians and Jewish people in chat. I know you're supposed to treat him like a prophet. But King Solomon was the most demonically charged man that's ever existed. Like one of them. He had all the riches of the world. One of the, the richest of all time. I mean, that that is like he talked about building his temples with demonic spirits and shit. And you got to watch out with that because in Freemasonry, they obsess over Solomon's temple. And yeah, I had one dude get mad when I insulted King Solomon in my chat. This is like months ago. And I was like, hmm. By the way, dude, today I couldn't resist. Like I got some work done, but really I started fucking reading again. Reading stuff that has nothing to do with what I'm doing. You know, just reading of the ancient times on the fucking beanbag, dude. Fucking crazy. I, it's rare I'm ever this happy. But it's like, I know what my dream home's going to look like. It's going to have a beanbag. It's going to have, um, what else? I want to say backyard, but do I really want to let go of this Miami thing? Like, what if I spend all of 2023 away from Miami? Miami is the best place on earth. Miami is literally the best city I've ever been to. Like, that, that water is green, bro. That's... <clears throat> but I'm liking Texas, you know. First few days is okay. Now I'm like... This house is fun, dude. <clears throat> These guys have day jobs, so during the day, I'm just here alone, plotting to take over. So sick. 
Except there's something weird about Americans. It's like they like hover around for a tip when they drop off your Uber Eats. And it's like, dude, I spent $300 a day on Uber Eats. You really think I'm tipping you? I've been doing this for years. Like, you know how much money I spent on this shit? You really think... I could have a $1,000 cash that I find on the street and I'll never fucking tip an Uber Eats. The fuck? I will never, ever... I only tip, like, the trip. I don't tip, you know, how people hand him cash? I went on vacations to Mexico and I was tipping $150, $200 a tip. I went vacations Vegas. I went everywhere and I tip huge. I go to restaurants, I tip huge. Uber Eats, you want me to tip on the thing that I need every day of my life? You think I'm cooking? And I'm like, yeah, I'll throw in a little bit of tip, but they expect a cash tip as well. That's what's so weird. I, I have Mar- American buddy of mine said, John, you tip with the app, but then you also have to give them on their hand cash. And I'm like, is that why they like hover around and stare at me? The fuck are you looking at? The fuck you want to tip for? If, bro, I use the fucking app every single day. You want me to tip every fucking day of my life? Who the fuck pays $300 for not, it's not even groceries. $300 and 80% of it gets eight in the morning. No, it's not $300. I'm thinking Canadian. It's like $180. No, he wasn't trolling me. People tip cash at the door when the Uber Eats guy comes. And I'm like, bro, I tipped in the app. Why are you staring at me like you want a cash tip? You want to make out? And Americans always do that. Canadians don't. They know they got the tip in the app, so they fuck off. No, Yassine taught me this evil trick. He says, drop a $50 tip, and they rush to your house, and then switch it to $1 after they drop off your food. Yasin is a fucking dirty little bitch, bro. That guy's teaching some demonic arts, man. Right? But I'm not going to lie to you, okay? I've never seen an Uber Eats delivery person that I didn't want to punch in the fucking face, regardless of their gender. I'm kidding. But listen... I've never once priority paid for it, the food to come on time. My food is always 40 minutes late when I'm not hungry anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you want a tip for that? Are you fucking stupid? Today I did the most evil shit. I said to the lady, drop the food at the door, don't knock, turn around, walk away slowly. And then that's when I realized I'm like, Do I just do content with myself to be funny for myself? You know, like, who does that? I can screenshot and show you that I actually did that. And then I realized, like, that kind of sounds like a gun thread. Like, I should chill out. But uh, something about Uber Eats people I hate because I've had shit jobs in my life. And I know an easy job when I see one. There's nothing fucking easier than that job. There's no job more fun than that job. There's literally, they're trick-or-treating at this point. There's no, I've worked construction. I worked Target. I worked, I worked the shittiest jobs with no tip ever. I never even, I used to, I remember the poorest I've ever been when I worked at JY Escape. It's like an Ikea, smaller Ikea. Furniture. I helped this guy get some huge desk in his car and it took a while and I was sweating and I was done. He gave me a $20 tip. I looked at his piece of shit car and his piece of shit family, right? Low class, ugly family. And I looked at him and I'm like, no, thanks, man. And he's like, why you want your tip? I'm like, no, no, I don't accept tip. And he looked at my manager. My manager's like, take the tip, John. I'm like, no, because I'm like, bro, I'm going to have more money than you. You're like a fucking broke retard. And boy, was I right. But I knew at that early age, I'm like, if I accept that tip, I get stuck in loser land. Fuck that shit. So yeah, I I swear to God, that's a real story. Um, my manager is Carl, and it was JYSK, and um, yeah, the one time I ever started accepting tips where I felt like I changed was when I worked at the club, because then I started to hate people. But when I saw a family man with his fucking poor children, his tr- his children looked like they never ate, and he was like driving a minivan and all happy, like oh my life's so great. I'm like, bro, dude, I don't want your tip because I don't want your, 
And I want you to poison me with that mindset, right? And and whether I'm right or wrong, the point is that's what I did. You know what I mean? I'm like, John, are you saying that's how I should behave? I'm saying that's what I did. And I'm proud of what I did. Right? I once punched a little child and I was proud of it. Not that I fucking like to harm children. I was proud that I told the truth. Right? I was proud that I told everyone, hey, I was the one who did it. You know? It takes a lot to come clean. <laughs> but anyways. I was a teenager, bro. I was a kid myself. But yo, check this out. I hate Uber Eats. I think I want to learn how to cook, man. I miss like a... Like Eden is such a good cook now that I think about it. He watches some Gordo. Man, he whips it up. Because uh, it's weird. I order food and then I don't eat it all day. And then it gets bad. And then I go, fuck, what a waste of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I always order extra food so I don't have to like. You know when they're like, hey, we're going to deliver, but it's going to take two hours? Like, bro, I can't tell you how many times they deliver and I'm asleep, right? All last year, they deliver and I'll be asleep. And my food would just be fucking in the cold, right? I have to battle a raccoon to get my shit back. Hey, John, why didn't you shave your under lip? Uh, you look like a goddamn Mexican. Get going on. I'm like this kind of guy who doesn't really try to look good, you know, I'm just good looking, like, I don't really go to, I don't go to the barber and say, give me a nice mustache, and I don't really try, bro, I just fucking try, you know, like, one week I do a beard, one week this, but I just switch it up, I don't really, like, do that thing where I try hard, bro, that's you, bro. I didn't trim the middle, I swear, No. No, this is because I just wiped uh, my face with water that it's thinner. But I didn't. And I didn't lose the lisp. I can feel the teeth hitting the fucking lip, man. Which, by the way, the bean bag is better than the... T like, the teeth are worth the money, but the bean bag's better. In my opinion. Because the bean bag is tension release, man. It's, I've been living my life wrong, bro. Mm. Do you get lip filler? Yes, I do, actually. I also got a nose job, and I injected my cheekbones. Uh, no, not the bones, the, the cheeks for fat. So when I smile, it goes like, Right, because I want to be good looking and not ugly like women. You know, how women have to do that. Oh, right, I didn't do any work. Women do work, right? I'm a man. I didn't get any work done. I was thinking of a woman, dude. Oh, I'm so cold. I'm so cozy in this beanbag. Shave the mustache smaller and smaller until someone says anything. Oh, shave this until Poland is invaded. Is that what you want, you fucking racist? Usually I'm ugly as fuck, but today I'm peaking. You know, I look good. I look like Johnny Depp. Your streamer looks like Johnny Depp, actually. <laughs> this is uh, the gayest stream of my life. What books do you recommend to read? Manny P. Hall. And you can start with audiobooks, actually. But then it's not going to be enough. 
you know once you there's some you can't find that you have to just grab but um manny p hall is the best place to start like that is a good spot i re i recommend manny p hall because the books that i read you know how like i joke around about them being useless for business not really dude having a mastery of your mind is business that's what you're busy with and uh yeah i like manny p hall the one book I'd say I don't recommend is he has one on demons. I don't recommend that one, but the rest are all useful. You know, I'm not going to lie. When chat says like, yo, Zerka looks like this. Zerka looks like he had amazing sex with... I'm not going to lie. It's like, dude, you know, as a high-level comedian... You guys aren't funny. You know, like, I'm just being nice, but it's like, you're not really. It's like, is this what LeBron James feels like when people try and, like, ball next to him? You know? Like, is K-Bob supposed to be funny in chat, bro? And why are you named K-Bob? Is white teeth racist? It depends if they go up to a point or not. <laughs> you get it? Anyways. Which many P. Hall? I don't remember... Uh, I don't remember the names of any of his books right now. I'm blanking. But they're all on YouTube, the audiobooks, actually. It's, like, very... And they're easy. Like, dude, I don't know why people think this is, like, oh, bro, this is, like, genius level shit. These are easy. But they're... They designed them to be... These guys are geniuses. Like, they want people to read this, dude. They're, they designed them to be easy. I actually think Harry Potter is harder. Because Harry Potter is just boring as fuck. I think... Uh, there it is. Secret Teaching of All Ages. That's a good one. Just keep saying the names and I'll remember. The best way to finish a bunch of books in one month, always skip ahead. Skip the random parts. If you skip to 10 different random parts, something will catch your attention. Then, let's say you skip three quarters into the video. It'll capture your attention, but you might get so curious that you don't want you don't want to start it there. You want to feel the buildup. So you'll yank it all the way back and start from the beginning. But only retards read books from beginning to end. Never, ever do that. That's literally how you never finish a book. Every book that I gave up on, I, for some reason, had the left to write it. Don't ever do that. Go grab your attention and then the dopamine starts firing and then you go, okay, fuck it. I'll just start. This is worth it. I'll restart the book. But if you just start the book with no dopamine signaling, you're fucked. Does that make sense? I love audiobooks, yeah, because it's my cardio time. And music just doesn't do it for me because uh, I always feel like I'm being demonically charged by any kind of music now. I'll do like 10, 15 minutes of music. But also, my music is about murdering people or hard style. You know, like, you know what I mean? It's not good for me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's how good content creators work, true. Yeah. No, my whole life changed when, um, I think it was Leo Longevity. And he said, Go look at a coke addict. I think it was Leo who said this. He said, this is the most genius shit I ever heard in my life. I wish I heard it when I was 18. He said, go look at a coke addict that's fucking with their dopamine. They can watch Game of Thrones on coke all day and tell you... He didn't say this part, but the, I'll add this part. 
They could tell you the meaning, the hidden meaning, the symbolic meaning. They can tell you all of Game of Thrones if they like it on Coke. But they can't tell you anything else they did. That's interest. So if you can somehow generate interest in what you're studying, you can be a black belt in a lot of things. And I'm like, how do I manipulate that dopamine without doing drugs? Go to the interesting part of the book. That's why I skipped to the part where they talk about Lucifer. And I go, what the fuck? Why is this Mason talking about Lucifer? This is sketch. And then I go, you know what? This is not enough for me. I'm going to restart the book and see how we got to here. But if I didn't go to the fucking evil part, I would have never started the book. Chapter one is like boring as fuck. So... And dude, I learned this too late. I learned this when I was 26, I think, or 27. So I'm not smart. If I was smart, smart people learn this at 17, bro. Have you seen the smart kid in your class? He opens the textbook, goes to the good parts and looks through it. And he goes, oh, this is interesting. Then he reads out of interest. Then he goes back to the beginning. Like, dude, this is just curiosity. This is like, I'm a retard for figuring this out late. But I never... When someone explained it to me through dopamine, uh, it made more sense. I was like, oh, shit. You know, you could like, let's say you don't like playing ping pong or tennis. You could find a way to enjoy it and get good at it. You know what I mean? So. Sometimes I'll open a book and I go, I just can't get into it won't read that day at all and then other times i'll go whoa i'm into it and i'll spend literally six hours making sure i finish it so like i pick and choose if i you know if there's interest or not because all my life i thought if you just study four hours every day bro monday is not tuesday you know monday is boring tuesdays gets more interesting tuesday you can read more monday you just don't want to read you know, like, there's different... You gotta choose your battles if you want to be a genius. You have limited time on Earth. I think it was 1984. Yeah, I don't read books that are popular. That's fucking retarded. What the fuck? Hey, John, I read The Art of War. Oh, really? Yeah, I want to tune into your stream and listen to that fucking shit. Right. It's like when Jackson, Jackson Hinkle, someone that I really admire. I'm like, you're a fucking smart kid. You just get it. And I'm in his house and he goes, this book changed my life, John. And I, there was like this two state solution book. There's all like, oh, these are nice books. And then I'm like, you know, you should get into uh, philosophers because those are not just books. That, when, when you read philosophy, it actually buffs your learning. It's like a buff on other things. I can't explain. You, you know what I'm I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, some books will teach you about a topic and philosophy buffs you on those topics. Like it teaches you how to understand those topics deeper. And I, I can't explain it. But anyways, I'm telling him what books to get. He likes my recommendations. He likes uh, Haas's. And then he says, yo, this book is one of the best books ever. And I'm thinking like, Jackson's a smart guy. What's he going to pull out of that fucking cabinet? And I love it because... Like, all of our friends, none of us read books. None of them read books except me, Jackson, and Haas. So we kind of feel dorky when we're around each other. But it's kind of cute, too. Because it's like, we're not fucking retards. who just watch YouTube all day. And, uh, and he's younger than me. So he's, you know, that's smart for him to start early, right? And then guess what book he pulled out? Like, I wanted to punch Jackson in the face. The book that he pulled out was My Life Story by Dan Bilzerian. I, will, I thought he was pulling out Plato or something, right? Because Jack, I thought, I knew Jackson's like, he's not a mystical guy, he's not a smart guy when it comes to uh, esoteric stuff or, or any spirituality, but he knows politics, right? I, I, can, I enjoy his politics a lot. You know, he's a smart kid. And when he pulled out Dan Bilzerian, I was like, there's no... I kind of wish it was Mein Kampf. No, I'm kidding. He hates that because he hates Nazis. I mean, everyone hates Nazis. But yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, 
The dad Bilzerian thing threw me off because he was dead serious. And I looked at Haas like, are we supposed to laugh? And Haas just looking at the floor floor because Haas like, you know, Haas is the Hegel guy, right? So, so obviously he didn't get it. And I'm looking at Jackson like, are you trolling me? And he's like, honestly, such a good book, Circa. And walked away. There was no punchline. And I was like, what the... And then I even tested him when I grabbed the book to see if he like, oh, is Zerka going to damage the book? He like cherishes a Dan Bilzerian book. And that was the first time I was like, bro, Jackson, you read so many good books. Why would you recommend me Dan Bilzerian? But I guess he found his life interesting or something. But that was the first time I want to throw that fucking angle off the balcony. <clears throat> no, I didn't end up reading it. I'd be bored to death. There's nothing worse than people convinced that Zerka's a player. Hey, Zerka, you know this player? Anytime someone tries to show me a player, it's like they're telling me, since you're a player, do you know this guy? Like, what? Hey, John, there's this player in my fucking college. You would get along great with him. Why? Well, I know, John, you're not a player, but, like, since you're good at it, like, you can go back into being good at it. It's like, dude, it's not a sport, bro. Hey, I would rather kill myself than read Dan Bilzerian's book. How about that? In a video. How come there's no Street Fight videos of you on the internet? Probably the same reason that there's no fucking not one Instagram picture of mine. I'll pay you a thousand bucks if you find that Instagram. Just don't post. I think I'm the only person who got banned. And like, you know, like how stuff resurfaces. The abortion thing never resurfaced. Like nothing snaked me. Because I was like, there's no way they didn't screenshot that abortion joke. Remember when Raj was like, oh, I can't open this up. I'm positive. Because Candyland said, why is there a baby and everyone's like, yo, Zerka has a kid. No, it was an ultrasound of a baby joke that I posted on Instagram. And for years, I'm like waiting. I'm like, when is someone going to bring up my Instagram? Nothing resurfaced. Zero. Uh, well, two fight videos that are not fight videos. One is just really bloody. The other one's a little blood. And those resurfaced, but it wasn't a big deal. And one other thing resurfaced on reddit that's gone forever now i don't know why i don't know how i got lucky i think it's because they banned me it was me and my ex playing around in a weird way that would make me look kind of weird but yeah but they were trying to say like i'm a creep for playing yeah no not weird like that like weird like it's not like to cancel me. It's just kind of cringe now that I think about it. Like, I'm kind of glad it's not... I don't even know why I was on my Instagram. But yeah, nothing on my Instagram. Maybe 100 pieces of content. Not one of them ever resurfaced. Not one dude on Discord has ever had a screenshot. Not one out of half a fucking million people. Which really makes me wonder, like, how fast did I get banned? Because I found out the next day... <laughs> But, uh, yeah. At first, I was like, oh, I'm lucky. But now I really want some of that old content. Like, that was... That was my, my shit, you know. One-on-one <clears throat> -on -one pick a bouncer will fight you. No, that's not a video of a fight. That's the aftermath. That fucking guy got rocked. And that's not mine. I'm just there. I don't do that. Um... I would pay money to have some of those old photos of me. They look so cool. I have some badass photos on that Instagram that's like, you ever have moments in your life you want to save forever? My dumb ass is like, oh, I'm going viral. So like, I guess now, nope, gone. And I don't think it's forever. Like I'm positive. One, if one day I said, hey, $10,000 to find... I'm really worried that I'm asking for... Remember when Gross Score is like, hey, roast me, and then they canceled him? I'm worried. I'm like, hey, give me my Instagram back, and then something resurfaces that I don't remember. That's what I'm worried about. 
Because all Girl Score said was roast me and they found stuff to incriminate him. So imagine, because I'm thinking of two cool photos of me, but there's like 30 things that are like pretty illegal actually on that Instagram. Pretty bad. Yeah, it would like hurt me if it came out, I think. And you know what's funny is I don't remember them. Like I don't know what it is. All I remember is the badass photos of me, like the good stuff. Uh, it was like the first time I had like a hundred comments saying, dude, you're a fucking badass. <laughs> Lol, that death happened. You think I'd get canceled? Yeah, something would resurface that I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that one. <clears throat> I still want it though because those years I'll never get back those are my formative years you know what I mean those are some of the greatest years how would your life would have turned if you went viral when you were blasting. Um, um, I think I would have been more boring because I just went to gym all day and talked about gym. And it's like, there's no value in that. Like, hey guys, this is how you pick up a weight and put it down. And this is what you eat. And like, that is... There'd be there would be no truth to my channel. It would just be a fucking meathead. I don't think it would have been that badass, right? Plus, that's like it's just like a billion channels who do that already. Unless I was blasting and then working downtown, that would have been violent. Put a GoPro on my head. I remember when Eden said, he's like, every word you say is so comedic, you always sound like you're lying, and you always turn out to be telling the truth, and then you go back to saying something else, and it's like, nah, Circa's lying, but it's like, everything I say comes true, bro, do I just, I just sound like a fucking retard, I here, here, check this out, I mean this, right? I bet I could throw a football over the mountains. See, that's a lie. Let's try my best. I'm a horrible liar. Remember in Among Us? Can't do it. But yeah, dude, to think like my old life is gone and now I'm in a beanbag with a bunch of money and... Just like my whole future ahead of me. It's crazy. I'm blessed. I'm blessed with my work ethic. It's not showing this year. I mean, it will. But just not today. You know what's the best part of how much success I'm going to feel this year? It's not that I told you so, guys. It's that I'm never saying I told you so. I'm just never going to talk to you guys again. Like, you're going to see it in my smile. You'll be like, fuck, he's doing that I told you so smile. You'll be like, Zerga, you hit 10,000 views. I'll be like, it's, you know, got to stay humble. <laughs> ah! <laughs> You know, isn't it the greatest thing when it's like, oh, finally the dude who had a problem with my mustache, he finally gets to see my life peak while his life, here's the best part, gets worse. Like, even if you're a subscriber of mine, right? I still, like, wish the worst for you if you talk shit about my mustache. Like, I have serious, that's the tr honest truth about me is, like, I seriously have fucked up mind like i go to war dude say if you say one little critique for the rest of my life i'm like i hope this guy's perishes 
<laughs> what, George? You watched me when you were in high school? What the fuck are you talking about? You make it sound like I'm old as fuck on the internet. Jeez. You know, when I think about it, yo, this is cocky, but let me know if you want to hear it anyway, okay? I swear I've lived a thousand lifetimes in this one lifetime. I cannot think of one dude who went through what I went through. Not like, oh, it's so hard, but it's just unique. It's so unique, man. I think I believe in nurture more than nature. But I'm a racist. I'm kidding. But you know what I mean? It's like, dude, you get this different eyeball. You see the world differently when you go through shit. And dude, all I'm seeing is heaps of success and me working my ass off. It's like it's euphoric. Women don't understand. It's euphoric, dude. And I can't stop looking at myself because, dude, you know, like, I used to like myself, but now I, like, really love myself. Like, why didn't I look like this when I was 20 years old? Like, this shit is, I feel like a rapper who got new grills, bro. It's just peak con. I feel like an immigrant who gets a fade, right? Like, you see an immigrant, bzzz, oh, now I'm ready for the world. An immigrant with a haircut is unstoppable. Like, for some reason, they get so cocky. It's probably because it's all they can afford. <laughs> I am the immigrant, bro. We can get away with that one. I'm so sick, man. Mm. Peeking. I'm peeking, bro. Are you peeking? Address the lip injection allegations. I can't because when I talk about it, it sounds like I'm lying. Even that sounds like a lie. Wait, even that. Do you know what I mean? And then I start giggling and then people go, wait, did he actually poke his lips? Like, is this guy gay as fuck? You know what I mean? I can't talk about those are bait questions because then I just look me rambling makes it sound like I'm lying right now. I didn't get lip injections, but, uh, dude, I have insanely good lip genetics. Like, th these are some... That's why I hate women, because they don't own lips. But I'm telling you, when, you know, like, girls talk about my eyes and stuff like that. But I'm like, bitch, look at my lips. Like, why are we pretending like those aren't the best? But women cope, because all their exes have no lips. So they're like, if I, if I see Zerka's lips, like, I'll never be able to fuck another guy. You know what I mean? But, like, let's be honest, man. Like, I'm like a diamond, but I keep myself in the garbage can, you know? Just, like, don't take care of myself. Like, I'm just not a fucking narcissist, bro. I just don't care anymore, bro. It's all about fat lips, bro. Like, if you don't have fat lips, your face looks fucked up. And jawline. I saw a dude without a jawline today, and that's I actually understood uh, murder for like a split second, like an intrusive thought. Oops, but I was like, oof, you know, I understand the jawline thing. <laughs> like, if you're a man who doesn't have a jawline, you know what's the worst? Most guys who do roids, they just still have like these fucking saucer like they don't have jaw lines bro it's like how could you be a man without a jaw line you know what i mean like chin yeah exactly yeah i just want to be young forever man it's fucking fts <laughs> yo listen 
This is what I love and can't stop loving. Get fucking wasted at parties from 9 to 7. I love fucking getting loaded. Take some, Maybe take some pills and go to La La Land. Spending all my money on dope and extremely high priced tickets. But fuck it. At the end, it's all worth it. I like to live in my own world. Fuck regular life. Fuck a beanbag. I'm told to enjoy every minute, every liberal, liberalism. You know, that song makes sense when you're young and then you get older and you go, wow, I almost killed myself with that ideology. Like, that is dangerous. I'm told to enjoy every moment. That's dangerous. Liberalism means, I've been trying to define this for years, it means pride, right? Like to be a proud loser. Maybe I sound like like I'm worried because my twin brother's like, lighten up, dude. For some reason, you sound like a fucking Vietnam old man war vet. Like it's not always about cranky time. And I'm like, really, bro? I think it is. Do I sound that cranky now? And then I got buddies who go, bro, you're a cranky conservative. And you'll just pretend like you don't do a fat line of coke in front of me. Right? I'll be like, fucking drugs are fucking degenerate. It's fucking degenerate as hell. Right? But, uh... (laughs) Slicker's forced laugh. Do you guys enjoy these, like, uh, heart-to-heart moments? Because I feel like I want to do more of these this year, right? I want to put these on TikTok and be like, hey, little Zoomer watching, right? Hey, Zoomer watching, you're going to grow up to be a pedophile because you're a liberal and you're a a deviant and you watch porn at at 17 like a fucking loser. I didn't even know what porn was at 17. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? And I'm just going to fucking ruin Zoomer life, bro. I'm just going to ruin their fucking world. Just be like, guys, you're living wrong. Um, Andrew Tate place. Take Andrew Tate place now that he's gone. Yeah, I mean... If I use some OnlyFans friends to get a quick Ferrari, then I'll get higher view clips. I could do that. You know what I mean? Or I can do the hard way. You know what sucks is not only am I doing it the hard way, but I don't even have a shot at mainstream because of the shit I talked about. You know what I mean? It's like most people will not do like porn and stuff like that because they're like, oh, I could be on like Jimmy Kimmel. But a dude who talks about Epstein is never going on Jimmy Kimmel. So I'm fucked. You know, I got to That's why it's all about being a good businessman and learning to monetize the right angles. Like Nelk Boys, there's a great example of Patreon merch, the merch commercials, right? They've got the whole system down. That system is the most important part of success. Like, I can't tell you how many YouTube channels I watch and I go, they don't have a system of monetization. They only get paid by YouTube and have some sales around their merch, which is fucking retarded. And then I go, huh? Like, if you know you're not going on Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel because you say really edgy shit, then you should understand that you're not getting this $30 million paycheck. You have to make it. You have to force that paycheck. You know what I mean? <clears throat> someone said you're not selling your soul i disagree dude i think if you're on social media there's this fakeness to you uh like obviously it's not as bad as kimmel but there's this fakeness about living this life this is easiness too it's like dude i'm supposed to be a bricklayer i'm supposed to do like some manly shit can't even move this fucking thing <clears throat> yeah it feels weird when when you do this long enough, you start getting this imposter syndrome where you go, who would I be if technology didn't exist? And would I be outside that fucking club? I do wonder. And you know what's funny about that answer is 
in life, who you are is who you're programmed to be. You understand? In life, who you become is what you were consuming. CNN, YouTubers, whatever the fuck you watch. That's why I tell my friend, people I love in my life, I say, don't watch Twitch. Don't. Stop staying in that chat. Because there's no value. You're not learning anything. It's not fucking animal planet. You're not learning shit. You're just coping with being bored and lonely. And it's like, if you're going to cope, there's stuff that can teach you. Cope with stuff that teaches you. Don't do social media. You know? Because I'm proud if you say, oh, I don't watch TV and movies. Did you replace them for Twitch? Because then TV and movies are better for you. Right? Twitch is horrible for your mind twitch is twitch and youtube imagine someone put a gun in my head and says name one influencer you watch circa when you're offline i'd be like oh fuck you know like name one i'd be like oh fuck imagine you said name a useful one a useful influencer <clears throat> that's why I ask if I'm rambling because I go dude there has to be value to these it can't just be about random shit what if I only watch you Haas, Jackson, Sneeko, Fuentes, Alex Jones and those guys honestly then you're literally a, <laughs> you're literally gonna be on a watch list <laughs> look that fucking list of names <laughs> Zerka, Fuentes, Sneeko and Haas the, you're gonna be you need to tone that shit down bro i think you learned enough i think you need to be you have to go to you have to go get re-educated in our discord i think you've learned too much my dude i don't even do that much my dude that sounds like me when i'm banned on twitch that's all i used to do that's like no but you know what's funny is i can't watch a red pill guy because as soon as a red pill guy says, I'm fighting wokeness, I go, I know this bit. This is my bit. I get bored. So I can't even watch my buddies because I go, oh, you know. Like, it's like hearing my own thoughts. They're saying the exact same shit. Like, we're all, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> What's your source of entertainment off stream? It has to be books, dude. Uh, I found out that most humans cannot make images in their head when they're, let's say you're listening to an audiobook. If you can't make a movie in your head, it turns out you're very low IQ. I'm really good at making a movie in my head. And if I'm struggling and fogged, I draw it. So I learn it better. And dude, books is the best thing. I, I'm ready for prison, bro. If they said you can have any book you want in prison, I think it's not going to be that bad for me, man. You know, that was like one of my biggest fears in life is doing something stupid and getting locked up like all my buddies. But, dude, I'm ready for prison, man. Like there's books are the greatest content you'll ever discover. Like I can't wait to show you, you know, when I, I will actually get you guys to believe me when I put this mini documentary together and you guys look at me like whoa there's no channel on youtube who has this much information on the ruling class not alex jones not none of them and i mean like the details like we want to everyone says oh they sacrifice kids but how do they do it why you know well oh, pituitary and uh penile and uh, you know what I mean? The details is what's going to blow your mind. You know, So I can't wait to get this done. But I have a rule. Business has to get started and rolling before I can do passion. right? Because business is really like the gasoline of everything I want to fund. You know, like passions and shit. So I'm going to get this weekend done and then boom. Yeah, penile gland. I know there's something about penile gland. Yeah, I saved everything of Manny P. Hall's. Manny P. Hall's like a starter pack. 
The greatest book I'll ever recommend to you is a book that you cannot finish as an atheist. You can start it as an atheist, but you cannot finish it as an atheist. Morals and dogma. You know, and people point at me and they say, Zerka, you sound satanic that you promote this more than anything. And I'm like, my dude, finish that book. It's 800, it's a thousand pages uh, making an argument for morality and God. You know what I mean? And it, it tells you why the atheist position is stupid, but you can never actually figure it out because it, scholars find this book hard. This is one of the hardest books you'll ever do. That's why you got to do it. Like, I'd recommend you finish this book 10 times and you'll... If you finish it 10 times, you'll remember it like you read it once. It's that, it's rough. Like they, I like the English, you know, right? It'd be like, and so uh, let's say, uh, I like the English. It's, it's tough though. It's a tough book because it's like every sentence hits you four times and you got to redo it. But yeah, there's free copies and shit. I bought one. And Morals and Dogma is the greatest. It's the Masonic Bible, pretty much. And it's the greatest fucking book I've ever read. Because it's just 100% truth. Because it's not about like, oh, evil shit. It's about uh, arguing about uh, morality arguing for morality through uh the abrahamic texts but the best part of it is it talks the whole book talks about destiny right and no i didn't finish this book when i was young i finished it this year or last year yeah or maybe two years ago but not i was on twitch for sure the whole book is about the streamer destiny and nihilists and how they cope through the world without God. And it's mind bending because it's like a thousand pages arguing about how you cannot deny God. Like try and deb- Any author you read, you can find a Weasley little debate in whatever you read. But this guy leaves no room for debate. So it's like you just finish the book going, oh shit, God is real as fuck. The then there's satanic parts where they talk about Lucifer and stuff like that, but really, um, they the Freemasons pay all the respect to God. It's just uh, they get greedy and and use uh, fallen angels to to obtain that kind of gnosis. And for me, it's life changing because you can listen to it in audio. For me, it's life changing because. If you want to have fun with that book, imagine a dumb DGG liberal trying to debate Albert Pike. Right? And the book doesn't discriminate against uh, Christ too much. Like, you don't feel offended. It actually shows a lot of respect, too. And then there's some fucking Luciferian shit. But it's not like what you think it is, where it's like they're angry and stuff. They explore every single lens. So through Shiva, through in- ancient India, through the Demiurge, through Christ, they explore every lens to see where God is. Like, like It's almost like the Masons are looking for him, right? And what's funny is at the end, they just submit to Lucifer, which is like, are you fucking retarded? But I told this to my brother and my brother's like, you know, most people read that book they're not going to come closer to God because of it. I think you should just recommend the Bible. And I'm like, but if you see the bad guys choosing Lucifer, then you'll run right to the Bible. But if you go right to the Bible, you're going to quit. You're going to be like, oh, I don't know if this is real and shit. But if you see the billionaire class go right to the evil, then you're going to go the opposite direction. You know, it's like. Does that make sense? Anyways, yeah, it's, um, 
Yeah, but that's not like Manny P. Hall is like baby level, and then Albert Pike is like elite level. That's a hard read. <clears throat> kind of, but it was a bit confusing. I feel like I should just stop talking about this fucking book and review it on my stream. But it might be like the most anti Twitch stream I ever do. Like, that's not for a Twitch audience. It is the slowest thing ever. Because you guys don't have to sit through the boring stuff. I bookmarked all the good stuff. I was going to wrap it up for a documentary. But I could go through a stream where I show you guys the bookmarks. Where it's like, you can see Mammon and, uh, the, let's say, the Fallen Angel of Greed. And then we could talk. I think there's Azazel in it, which is from the Quran. I think there's, uh, obviously, Lucifer. There's... Um, Moloch talks Moloch. Uh, the problem is, bro, it's been months trying to book more. I want someone to help me. Like, if someone actually has, there's people in my Discord who are smarter than me, but they don't have the interest in this stuff, so they don't want to do the book. So, I sent the book to a bunch of people. I'm like, yo, help me bookmark this book. Nobody helps me. But if I get 10 people to finish the book 10 times each, including me. Then they, we can all share bookmarks. And, uh, yeah. Because when you have the bookmarks, you could just go to the right to the good shit. But maybe I'm just an old man where it's like, dude, page one. If I start page one, I finish the whole book. You know, like, I can do the whole thing. It, it turned, I, the first comment is so based. It said, I quit listening to music and made this my music. Right? Um. And what you, here's what's interesting is like a lot of people look at me and they go, John, this is satanic that all you read is Freemasonry. And I go, no, because you're reading a bunch of truth. But if you're listening to mainstream media that's from the Freemasons, not from their personal book, but what they prescribe for you, that is satanic. Okay? Their books are kind of like for each other. They're not that fucking bad. But if you're consuming mainstream media and all that fucking gay shit, that is the bad stuff. That's what you don't want. And you do that every day. So now if the books were like Conjure Satan, Conjure Satan, obviously I'd be like, yo, don't read this shit. But it's not. The books talk about like um, uh, the cha chaotic female nature of God would be uh, would be material. And then the fatherly nature of God would be the will and the world soul. And it's just nice to hear people. It's so refreshing to me. Even if I got to hear it from my enemies, it's refreshing to hear an argument about God that sounds like it's ancient, like Plato wrote it. There's a bunch of Plato in there. Where The funny thing about Albert Pike is all the Plato stuff that you'll sense, he doesn't actually credit plato everyone else he credits like he credits like a hundred intellectuals but not plato and a lot of it is stolen right but uh what was i talking about is this interesting to you this is interesting to me this is like this is going to be my life's work after i make my, make my first millions is i'm going to be in a library and i'm going to go balls deep in this right I don't want to just have a sign saying the end is nigh, like I'm uh, Alex Jones. I want to be able to debate it from every angle perfectly. Where it's like, there's, you know what's the butter of life? Is seeing an atheist spirit broken. Right? Because I'm so used to atheists being like, oh, sky daddy. And then you feel bad. But I love saying to an atheist, oh, you're a fucking atheist? Are you retarded? And then they look at me like this. Why are you so sure, John? And I don't have to make a debate. I'll have this. I'll have all the bookmarks set up. And I'll have a whole video. i also going to make this video um, once I get my channel going. Which is funny. My channel's going in like two di different directions. But they're going to meet up. Trust me. I also want to make a video called uh, 10 Proofs There's God. Right? Something like that. Where it's like, I can't tell you how weak the argument for God is 
from Muslim scholars, Christian scholars, Jewish Zohar scholars. Dude, everywhere I click, everyone makes a weak argument for God. It feels like a psyop. I'm not that paranoid, but it feels like a psyop. And I'm thinking to myself, like, they're making Sam Harris look smart, these fucking retards. But Sam Harris, to, if Sam Harris sat down with that fucking devil himself, Albert Pike, he wouldn't be able to do those fucking retard debate tactics like on the with the problem of evil and fucking retarded shit that Sam Harris does. And I remember why I'm mad is because I spe- when I was in high school, I know DGG does this as an adult. When I was in high school, I was addicted to Richard Dawkins. Yeah. I only felt less cringe when I found out adults listened to him. I was like, that's so high school. But I used to think Dawkins was a genius when I was in grade 12. I used to think Sam Harris was God. That's how fucked up I was. I wouldn't say it out loud. I wasn't that stupid. But I had like respect for these fucking retards. That's why I love Trump, that Trump dispelled a lot of things for me. Because, you know, I had so much respect for Sam Harris. But after the 2016 wave, you just scroll down. The first comment is, wow, Sam Harris is a libtard. And that dispelled everything for me. I'm like, holy shit. He's actually a pseudo-intellectual. Like, Trump exposed everyone, right? And people are like, John, you'll dismiss someone's entire intellect if they're a libtard? Yes. What the fuck do you mean? Of course I will. Every single time. That's like my compass in life. Right? So if if it's a high level fucking libtard, I'll be like, okay, this guy's fucking stupid as shit. Mm, Trump is low IQ. No, Trump is a genius, man. Like, think about it. His rival had a hundred billion dollars Bloomberg and didn't get one vote 100 billion with a B Trump had like 2 2 billion and I'm like how the fuck did he become the most loved president of all time with such little money like Clinton's had more everyone knows that way more connections And then I'm like, whoa, do I want to really, like, give it to Bannon? Or is there something genius about Trump? Because you don't just start giving out those speeches without practicing, right? And uh, and he practices Kabbalah. He has a book where he wrote he had a Kabbalah teacher. So if you know what that is, you know this Freemasonic shit is at the highest level every time. And... uh, one thing I couldn't get over is Trump's 66th floor, right? The devil's number 666 or 66th on his tower. It's all sun worship of Apollo, the sun god, which Apollo is really just... You can almost... This is not correct, but you can use it as a synonym for Horus, which is like hour of the day for the sun. Horus, uh, Ra, Set, and Osiris which is really the Masonic Rosicrucian God. And uh, they're all the same sun worship in just different angles or different times of the day. And that's what really fucked with me is like, everything Trump battles is evil. But why the fuck is Trump on the 66th floor with a whole golden room dedicated to sun worship of Apollo. And then he has the Kabbalah cube at the top of his tower. Mind-blowing shit. Because he's in that elite group, man. No, he's not. I used to listen to you guys, and I used to be convinced by dumbass paranoid people that Trump is like the Antichrist. You guys are about to look really stupid this year. 
fake is a lot of those prophecies didn't come true. A lot of fake ones. There was a lot of bullshit about what Trump was going to do. Because if you were right, they wouldn't be setting up DeSantis. But there is some spooky shit with Trump. One thing I love about Trump is he's never connected to children. So it's so easy to root for him. But all of Hollywood is connected to children, dude. Art, paintings, Balenciaga. You know what I mean? I feel like Trump's more connected to hookers. <laughs> yeah, the NFT shit killed me. Don't talk about that. Do you know who the Antichrist is? Well, it's split in the conspiracy circles. Some say Trump. Some say Biden. My circles say uh, the Pope. Which is not me shitting on Catholics, right? I can shit on the Jesuit order without shitting on Catholics, can I? Right? Jesuits actually... There's a meme. Go watch the Pope documentary on Netflix. It's actually good. There's actually a meme about how Jesuits are fake Christians. Like, the Pope makes the joke. Like, they're known for being liars. Your circles, you mean yourself? No, there's three conspiracy circles online about the Antichrist. One is whoever's the sitting president. Two is the big one, Trump. And then the smallest one that no one's allowed to talk about because the right wing is very Catholic Right? I love Catholics, but Catholic over Orthodox any day. But, you know, and a lot of right channels can't say that because they have to suck off Putin. But I'm telling you, when I say this, bro, the devil's in the Vatican. I feel it. I mean, the Vatican has every single scroll that Muslims need, Christians need. Buddhists need everything is in there in the Vatican archives. <clears throat> Even information on Atlantis, which Manny P. Hall and all those Masons, every single one of them talks about Atlantis. It's like a land in between uh, the U.S. and Europe. But they, they, yeah, I always thought Atlantis is like this fucking fairy tale shit until I realized there's over like. 800 fucking pages on Atlantis. And those pages are actually connected to the same people who talk about building pyramids through sonic vibrations and magnetism. Some people link it with giants too. I I get the giants thing, but I don't I don't go that far. Am I rambling, bro? This is what I hate is my brain only goes to this fucking stuff. I can never have a stream where I let go of this shit. But apparently giants are real, bro. Like, it's irrefutable. Giants existed. Some people debate how big. Some people say Titan level, like an ant, uh, attack on Titan. I think it's bullshit. Masons built the pyramids after birth of Christ. See, that's something that can change your whole world view. There are people who say it's a lie that Egypt came before everything, like Adam and Eve. And if you really see it the other way, the Bible becomes real. Like, very quick, it becomes too real. But even Masons and stuff like that, they talk about Egypt coming way before uh, Christianity and all that. <clears throat> That's why I like a lot of my... Uh, why I like Jewish people is because they'll look you in the eye. Orthodox Jews will look you in the eye and say, nope, nothing came before Adam and Eve. And I go, what? Right? Like, there's this one on Discord I was talking to. He's like a rabbi. And he never once wore the COVID mask. He'd be in New York. And they were, like, trying to beat his ass to put the fucking mask on. And he won't do it. And I'm like, that's bad. The whole fucking pandemic, he didn't do it. And, um, yeah, and anyways, I was talking to him, and he's the first person to wake me up on de-evolution, 
de-evolution rewires your brain. When you think of people, humanity is de-evolving, balding, uglier, fatter, blah, blah, blah. When you think humanity is evolving backwards, not from like a chimp, from a fucking astral genius fucking being of light to a fucking retard. When you see evolution backwards, everything makes sense. But when you see it as like, this is the best we've ever done, then it gets really confusing. And the destiny is like, well, this is the best we've ever done. People just have anxiety and depression. And... <clears throat> yeah, we're the furthest from Adam and Eve, yeah. I hate that Adam and Eve is shown to us as primitive. Yeah, I get primitive is a good thing in this sense. Primitive would be like closer to innocence, before sexuality, all that. Before shame, before fear, before anxiety. But there's still a much higher level than what we are, right? We would be considered like the slime, the slime soup. Yeah. Rosicrucians, Masons, uh, Jewish people, and Neoplatonists, all, all ancient religions as well, all believe they got visited by androgynous beings, Some, uh, most of them from water, and that before man was man and woman, they were, you know, male and female together, right, the two triangles. Right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, one third of the angels fell. Of course, they'd pervert God's creation. Like, they'd, they'd show up to you like that. And people would be like, yeah, but you can't say that about God. I'm like, no, no, they're saying they got visited by these fucking god's plural anytime it's god's plural that's demons dude okay god is not a plural that's fucking retarded anyways um what was i saying the all-seeing eye represents god and the triangle is the halo that represents the holy trinity get to pia you're fucking retarded the triangle in the eye. Does anyone know who the eye is? You no, know, Tapia's right, but that's not what the eye is. The triangle is a trinity, yeah. Yeah, it's Horus. And who is the Mason's God, chat? This is going to fuck you up. It's not Horus. Older. No, I said Mason's God. Sun God, Baphomet, Hassan, Satan, Hermes, all wrong. Moloch, that's all wrong, right? Moloch is like a machine they'll use, right? But who's their God in their texts? How does no one know the answer? You've been listening to me forever. It's Osiris. The light bringer Osiris. I just said it in the beginning of the fucking stream. <clears throat> so you guys are kind of right, because Osiris... Horus, depending on the time of the day, set, whatever, um, Lucifer would all be the same light bringer. Yeah, they don't talk about Ra that much. Do you think all religions are related to Christianity? Um, 
I'll tell you this much. The two mystical texts that are the least known, according to Pike, is the Zohar and the Bible. Well, they say Bible, Talmud, and then Zohar in that kind of order. But in my opinion, the Zohar and the Bible, these two contain a lot now you gotta remember that the Zohar is like blasphemous against the Bible depending on who you are right Bible is man made uh, it's not the Bible cannot be man made because the Bible made man. The Bible is why civilizations even popped up. So, and cavemen can't think like that. Like, no caveman can just sit down and be like, okay, this is how you live. Uh, you're supposed to get married to one girl. No caveman would think that. No pagans thought that. They were all fucking degenerates. <clears throat> Yeah. Also, you don't replicate a perfect society without Jesus' example. You're fucked. Without Jesus, you're fucked. And I know this is blasphemous to say, and I don't really give a fuck. The prophets are fucking useless. Okay? Without Jesus, the whole fucking thing is it's over. Okay? The prophets, I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. I, don't, I know it's blasphemous, but I I don't give a fuck, dude. It's... People are so fucking stupid. People got... I, I got Catholic friends who have pictures of saints on their fucking wall. and Or they'll have... Like, dude, forget your fucking prophets. Forget the fucking saints. Forget... Bro, you're... Wa it's like watching Dragon Ball and saying, I'm going to put Krillin on my wall. Like, why don't you just put the guy who sacrifices everything? Why don't you put Goku on your fucking wall? And it's so weird that you got to teach adults how to religion. It's like, bro, it's not that hard. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, dude, the older you get, the more you'll be looking at that Bible. You'll be like, wait a minute. My millionaire friends are severely depressed. My loser friends are severely depressed. And then you start looking for people who have strong oversouls, like people you want to be like. Dude, you'll never find an atheist you want to be like. Unless you like Dan Bilzerian. You know, that's when I was started fiending for religious people. I was like, I need to be around them. Because like, I can't respect a fucking degenerate. And to me, a degenerate is anyone who can't squeeze their brain. Right? Because like, what an agnostic person is really telling you is, Hey, thinking about God is hurting my brain, so I stopped. Yeah, you're supposed to you're supposed to challenge the Bible. You're supposed to ask questions, bro. You're supposed to read it vertically, horizontally. You're supposed to do that. That's the point. What the fuck? It's not Kumon Learning Center, bro. <clears throat> uh, what about Quran? I started with the Quran actually. And I love the Quran. It's just I can't get over marriage as end game, you know. For me, that argument's really powerful. Marriage is like end game for a human. Like if you want to replicate heaven on earth, you gotta live a married life. You know, everyone knows what I mean by this, right? Like you see an old married Christian couple, and they're like, "Ah, eh, Agnes, come here," and then you're like, "Oh shit, these guys are coping correctly." Yeah, I'm not running from marriage and seeing it through a different lens. Like, the Christian lens is pretty correct. And then you got to think about it. It's like, do you value marriage? Even if I don't get married, I'll always talk about it. You know what I mean? Even if I fuck it all up, I'll always talk about it. Because I'll be like, man, what was, imagine society without marriage. You can imagine it. Because like, we live in dark times. Yeah, you die alone. That's crazy, dude. 
You can't have sex before marriage. Yeah, that's that's actually based. I mean, dude, I would give all the money I have to be a virgin with my wife, and she's a virgin. Like, I would literally fight a bear for that. That would be fucking... I would easily... I would, I would fight 10 dudes for that, even if they were holding machetes. That is... That would be great. And people are like, well, John, just get a virgin wife. But I don't want the deviancy. I want to be a virgin too, you know? Like, why children don't commit suicide is they haven't bit from sexuality yet. That's my conclusion, and I think it's very genius level. But teenagers drink bleach and kill themselves because they get sexual. Why no one will ever admit that is because parents are pedophiles. They go, oh, my daughter dates. She's 14, John. And they want to be proud. They're like, oh, is Hollywood watching? Like, maybe, like, my daughter's popular enough to be, like, Vanessa Hudgens. And, like, they're so programmed. But, dude, if your daughter dates as a teenager, the parents should be in prison for 10 years. And they should be some lashes on that. They should whip them. And people are like, look at me like, what the fuck, John? What are you talking about? Dude, children don't commit suicide. Sexuality is pretty big, bro. It's it's the only thing. It's the only driving force of the world, bro. It's like, you don't want to just give that up. Not even if you're a guy. Like, there's Andrew Tate types that will look you in the eye and be like, no, you're a guy. You get the fuck around. The girl doesn't. Bro, being a player makes you gay. Being a player is being a bad boy. There's nothing more bad than fucking a dude in the ass. Like, ooh, I'm being bad. Like, God is watching. That being a player is the gayest shit you can do. <clears throat> That's why people like Andrew Tate are coping. It's like, dude, you got, you got to preach. Is it Hasidic communities where the man is a virgin and the woman is a virgin? They have a crazy high success rate with their marriages. It's not just a community thing. I think it's them. Uh, Plus, isn't it creepy? Like, you're being deviant with strangers. Isn't that fucking disgusting? I done it a lot. So think about it. You're being deviant with strangers. Like, I'm kind of glad people can just be like, actually, he's a rapist. And then you get your life destroyed because it's like, oh, you want to go play that fucking deviant game? Maybe you are a rapist. You know what I mean? I'm kind of glad the fucking Me Too movement is destroying some innocent lives. Because you want to be a player, bro? Go play with a fucking crazy bitch and learn your lesson. Uh, You know what I'm saying? This guy says new topic. Bro, what topics, bro? I'm going off you. What do you guys like to hear about the most when I'm flowing? Um, you know what's one thing I hate talking about? I hate talking about innocence because I'm not the guy. But am I allowed to preach something I'm not that expert in? You know what I mean? I'm not an expert in innocence. Why can't I preach it? You know, if I had a son, I wouldn't like sit down and be like, well, son, since I'm a deviant guy and I've done a lot of shit in my past, like, why would I, you know what I mean? I can preach it. Why can't I preach it, bro? Dude, I used to be euphoric before I had sex. I lasted a long time. I lost my virginity one month before 20 years old. So I was euphoric, dude. I used to just, like, no burden. Like, the after you have your first deviant experience, the, there's portal opens, and your life changes forever. Anyone who loses it at 13 chases skirts for the rest of their life. You know what I mean? They're deviants, right? They're, like, fucked up in the head. I lost it as a man. I'm proud of that. You know what I mean?
Johns are called Jesus is Lucifer. Yeah, I have this book. I have like this $95 book calling Jesus the Serpent King and how he's actually Satan and stuff. And I read the book to be convinced and I trolled around in Discord. The only way that book, those kind of people, those Gnostic serpent worshipping Ophites and Canaanites, the only way those guys are correct in today's society is if you don't believe in alchemical rituals. Like, for example, there's that guy, uh, Adam Green, who talks about it a lot. Dude, he doesn't believe in rituals. No shit, he thinks. If I didn't believe in fucking rituals, I would say, yeah, Jesus is the serpent king and blah, blah, blah. But that's fucking retarded. The, the same group that goes after Jesus, they think that it's just a material world. And it's like, what the fuck? And they'll just glaze over a Masonic text that says that nihilists will be unleashed to kill everyone. And they'll be like, no, no, John, you just got to be a nihilist without religion. I'm like, bro, that's, even if you were right, that's your answer? That's fucking retarded. But I've heard their arguments where it's like, he caught out of a cave and shed his skin and he's the serpent king and blah, blah, blah. And it's just fucking retarded. You know, it's like, dude, I don't think giving 2 billion people peace of mind on earth is Satan when literally there's Balenciaga and there's actual rituals to these demons. And by the way, there's never been one witchcraft book. If you believe in witchcraft and stuff, this will make sense to you. There's never been one witchcraft book in history that conjures up Jesus. Why is everyone saying my lips are fake? There has never been one book to conjure up Jesus. Do you understand? There's thousands of banned books to conjure up certain demons, depending on what you're trying to do. Aleister Crowley, who was good at this, was knighted by the queen. None of these black magicians ever summoned Jesus. They actually had to, like, do invert the cross and do other crazy shit. Like, dude, if you want to believe Jesus is Satan, how come he's never used for any satanic rite? Are you fucking stupid? They use, like, ten different fucking names. But they'll never use Jesus. You understand? So it's like... Now, if I didn't believe in witchcraft, if I just saw a religion as a pragmatic thing, then I would believe it. I'd be like, oh, you have a good argument. But I do believe in witchcraft. I believe in Balenciaga. I believe in Epstein Island. I believe it's real. I believe in these alchemical processes they go through. And... Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's just too much evidence for it. And probably the smoking gun nobody notices is in history, capitalists are not the highest paid. Geniuses are not the highest paid. World changers are not the highest paid. Revolutionaries are not the highest paid. Kings and queens are not the highest paid. Black magicians are literally sitting where they print money. So you're telling me, hey, they have books on black magic and they print all of our money and give it to the king and queen? And I'm supposed to think their magic doesn't work? They have all the material wealth of the world how the fuck do they... And they all... Look, man. If every zillionaire had a big dick, I'd say big dick attracts zillions of dollars. But every zillionaire has a book on black magic. And they're profound. They're good at it. If they're not, then they're like that fucking Queen Elizabeth. Who, she sucks. She never did anything with her fucking life. She sucked at witchcraft. Right? Uh, Seville guy was better than her. Some of them just suck at it. 
like the, imagine having all that wealth and like you're not known for anything like the queen isn't known for anything dude even the, uh cuck harry is known for more now like she doesn't really have a theme she never did anything she you know at the, i don't get it you know she's not even known for any like famous genocide like we know she done genocides but we don't remember which ones you know what i mean like she she's not even good at being evil so when I think about it, I'm like, what a fucking loser. Like, you grow up since five years old reading about black magic and you can't do anything? Like, you didn't... Aleister Crowley is just... He's not royalty, is he? He's not royal blood and he got fucking knighted. So that guy's really good, right? That guy's really talented. That guy got fucking knighted from just being a bum doing heroin in a fucking back shack. And you know, people like Destiny will look me in the eye and they'll be like, John, Aleister Crowley's poetry, his poetry is about drinking vomit and eating pussy cheese and, and, and pissing down this woman's throat and making her eat feces as they did heroin in the backyard of some random house that nobody knows who's funding this. John, I'm pretty sure this guy's crazy. And I go, okay, Destiny, how did he get knighted? How can you not believe in witchcraft and black magic if he wrote a hundred fucking books on it and got knighted and he's only known for that? You know what I mean? He doesn't have books about the Teletubbies. So I'm thinking to myself, like, are people retarded? What is the common missing variable with all zillionaires or influential people throughout history, it's always something demonic and deliberate. Like they're, it's like a contract. So, yeah. Why I, tr why I have to say this every day is there's nothing more embarrassing than being a grown man and saying, I believe in witchcraft. Like, that's the gayest position you could have. And, you know, it's embarrassing to admit that. But also, I would hate to be against, uh, on the other side of this argument. You know, I've heard people try and debate me here, and they just look at me like this. No, they're just being edgy, John. They're just being edgy. All of them? All the guys in the fucking treasury are being edgy? Come on, dude. What's a good book about black magic? I think the best one is uh, The Book of Lies. Um, but I haven't read too much into it. I don't know. The documentary I was watching once wouldn't even read some of the book because it was that afraid. Hmm. No, it, it's not like you get a Ouija board and then the fucking demons show up. It's like your will into the universe is to summon demons. That's why they come. It's not because of the fucking Ouija board. It's what you're willing. That's what, what this is. It's not like about a fucking game. It was like, remember there was this craze when I was in high school called Blood Over Intent, I think. And basically these kids would, in high school, in my high school, Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill Secondary School, they would cut their fingers, write down something, that they would wish for something by spell casting it, writing down on a piece of ripped paper, and then they would cut their finger and bleed on the paper, and sometimes write it in blood. And then this was a whole trend. There was like 30, 40 kids at school doing this. And a lot of kids were like, oh, I don't want to get a part of that. Uh, did it ever work? Yes. Look at, um, I forget her name. She made $20 million. And then she leaked a photo covered in blood saying, she's like this celebrity talking about broom. Not Brumhilda. Brum, what's the word called? Uh, Brum, someone knows it in chat. It's witchcraft, but what is it called? 
Who am I thinking of? Yeah, Churchill's in Masonic robes, yeah. Oh, nobody knows what I'm talking about? I didn't hear the question. What the fuck? You're watching the stream, bro. What are you in the back of the classroom? Wake the fuck up. What is it called, guys? The celebrity who got caught with the bloody, uh... Man, this chat is not based at all. Anyways, the point is... That shit works. That shit works. Unless you have a distracted mind where, you, where you're thinking of other things. But if you're focused, conjuring up demons works. Like, you got to remember, you have two choices. One, oh, I have a chemical imbalance, so I raped her violently. Or two... I was demonically charged. That's why I raped her violently. There's only two realities you can live in. One is a chemical thing, which doesn't really explain anything. It's actually fucking retard science. And then two is like, yeah, people are demonically charged. Some people get jealous, their wife fucks someone, and they go sh shotgun them and plead momentary insanity, right? Well, I don't think... it. The scariest thing to me is that most people are satisfied with saying, that guy's just crazy. That guy who, what are the chances every single, except one, I am i don't even know if I'm, I think it's every, 99% of American psychopath killers are all linked to a cult and military and both psychic uh, programming, programming with with the trauma based mind control and Satan worship. What are the fucking chances? You know what I'm saying. I think all of them except one. And I'm pretty sure there's evidence for that guy too. But <clears throat> that's the crazy thing is like, dude. There's no such thing as psychopaths not linked to some satanic shit. If it was just some random guy killing people, I'd be like, eh. But every single... Uh, every single American famous murderer was linked to... Uh, to uh, some dungeon where they did some weird rituals. I don't know about John Wayne Gacy, but I'm not going to lie. That guy terrified. If I had one fear, it's that guy. He would dress up as a clown and he was fat. That's the scary part. And he just murdered the shit out of children and put them in his fucking basement and tortured them. And imagine torturing kids to death with an axe and having a blue hair liberal turn their head and say, he's just crazy. Yeah, that guy who put the child's head in the freezer. Yeah, John, according to Destiny's studies, he's just crazy. Uh, do you guys, like, not believe in evil? No, evil's subjective, John. He's just crazy. Evil's a polarity. Like, he's just crazy, John. Evil doesn't exist. Evil would mean that there's also God. That doesn't make any sense, John. And I'm like, dude... And you know what's funny is the intellectual position of 2023 is that he is crazy. That it's not that he's demonically charged. But in many P. Hall's time, or let's say 1900s, 1700s, or any time in history, they'd say that motherfucker's demonically charged. He's cutting a kid's head off, bro. He's, you know, he's the adversary to God right now. He's, he's coping. 
So yeah, I think I make a strong argument. I think I make a strong argument for why I talk about God. Because it's like, it's an everyday thing, you know. I feel like nobody makes strong arguments for God anymore. It's like, I don't know, people debate the dumb shit. If you just go to where the money is, God gets very real. Like, where are the billionaires? What do they do on these islands? You know, didn't the Bible say they're going to inherit a lot of the material world? Uh, man's got lip filler, Botox. You know, this would be funny if there was like a punchline or something, but you're just like calling me good looking. This would be funny if there was like a hint of truth there, but you're just like calling me good looking without realizing it. Right? Like, yo, you got filler, you got, I don't know, what the fuck does Botox mean I have good skin? Tight skin? And it's like, bro, you've been repeating it for a long time. He's saying you sold out. I can believe he, some people actually believe that. Because some people are actually like, yo, if you got teeth like Donald Trump, that means you'll also get Botox. Because probably Trump has that too. And I'm like, dude, it's John Zerka. Like, I'm not going to lie to look cool. I'm already cool. I'm already like the guy on Twitch, bro. Like, everyone wants to suck my dick. Like, it, your e-girls, you watch, want to suck the skin off my dick. I don't need to lie. I can literally say I have filler and still fuck your favorite girl. I don't need to lie to look cool, bro. I can just tell you the truth. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something I would lie about. Like, I don't think, if I got filler, as gay as it is, I don't think I'd lie about it. I'd be like, yo, Chad, like, I just don't bite my tongue. But it's like, man, you're going to keep repeating my shit for like two hours? Jeez. <sighs> Bro, I wore a rainbow shirt once. I have a rainbow shirt. Like, I'm not above a joke. Okay. I'm not, like, trying to look cool. I don't wear a rainbow shirt. So, I don't think if I had Botox, I would be, like, embarrassed to say I did. I don't get why you think I'm, like, a sellout for that. You have to say, you look at your teeth, John, you're a sellout. And my teeth are fucking gorgeous, bro. Your bitch wants to suck me off. Mm. Anyways, here's what I was saying, dude. Uh... And talking to the phone. Why do you think you are good looking? Hmm. Because when I was a teenager, I would draw men who look like me, you know. And then my face morphed into this face. And so the people I was drawing, those like superheroes, I kind of became that. But I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I want to kill myself. You know, and I take that uh, vanity thing serious. Because there's one thing I noticed about men. Um, men who don't care about how they look. If you don't care how you look five days a week, that's fine. But if you never care, like I always dedicate one day a week to looking good. You know what I mean? feel like if you give up, you're a fucking slob. You should have a day where you're like, you try and shit. I think optics matter, dude. You know, Albert Pike talks about God being love and beauty. And then those words can't be described. Optics matter, bro. I actually need to start trying more. I need to build a suit and tie and I look professional and shit. I'm not reading all that. That's a long one, bro. His name is Soy Goy. This is crazy. They inverted... All right, let's read this fucking retard. They inverted Lucifer. Jesus is Lucifer, the light bringer, the morning star revelations. They do not... Okay, dude, by that logic, Jesus is said to have a voice 
like an archangel. And then Mikael is also said to have a voice of the archangel. So some Jehovah Witnesses say Michael in the Bible is Jesus. Just because they're both called Morning Star, you're going to be like, ah, that's it. That's all the evidence I need. Then not only would Jesus be the Morning Star Lucifer, he'd all, Venus, right? He'd also be Michael, the archangel. Because they had the same title. Like, that's the dumbest way to look at it. And it's fucking retarded. Okay, I've heard way better arguments from your fucking Gnostic, Gnostic Christians are fucking retarded. But they aren't archangels. What are you talking about? Michael is literally the archangel. I'd say he's second most powerful next to Lucifer. Lucifer was considered the most. Um... Sneeko liked my fucking comment. Oh, now you respond, you little fucking bitch. Now you respond. Like, he's one of those guys who will not text me. He'll like what I sent. Because he's just too big for me. He's just too famous. Like, who the fuck do you think you are, Sneeko, bro? <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. Sneeko, it reminds me of every... Bro, the guys I grew up with in high school... They all loved Hitler as well. I've never laughed harder than seeing that uh, Aiden Ross clip where Sneakos gets fucking sturdy to Hitler. <laughs> Bro, that was the funniest Twitter shit I've ever seen, man. But it's like some random folk song, like some random Germanic folk song. It's not, a, I don't think it has anything to do with Hitler. But uh, that shit was so funny because because Aiden's Jewish, so that was the funniest clip I've seen of twenty twenty three, dude. Because it's like seeing high school days, you know, in high school when people are obsessed with Hitler memes, it they're like repeating in the content world. Yeah, Aiden was like, don't laugh at that chat. And his chat's like exploding. Uh. No, bro, Jesus being Satan is fucking retarded because he's offered the four corners of earth or the four wings by Satan. So what is he offering himself? People be like, well, Jesus like talks to himself because he's also the father, right, John? Yeah, but the Satan wouldn't be. And it'd be the father, the word that's next to the father, because there's nothing dumber than trying to understand God. You understand? There's like a mediating word that you try and understand. Because look at this. This is a crazy argument for God that's going to blow your mind. If the creation could understand the creator, I seriously doubt that's your God. You know, Christians go like, I want you to have a relationship with Jesus. You can understand him and stuff. It's like you can benefit, but you really think you as the ant are going to understand God? Are you fucking retarded? Like, imagine if the ant looked up and said to the human, it's just fucking so stupid. Like, all these people like Destiny who try and rationalize God like that, I'm like, bro, you're trying to rationalize something that's outside of your realm. You know what I mean? That's crazy.
Look, I hate seeing the Jesus stuff because when I was researching Jesus being the serpent king, I was fucking with my ex who comes from a Mormon family and is very close to her parents. Like, she's like a baby with that. And she made her mom cry calling Joseph Smith a Freemason because of the shit I was saying to her. And then she told her mom, hey, my boyfriend said Jesus is Satan because I was reading some Jewish texts and I was fucking with her. And her mom starts crying. And then she tells me like months later and I'm like, bro, first you go to your mom and say you're a flat earther. Then she, you know, that's when your mom gives up on you. And then you say, th the funniest part is she said, I don't want to argue it. I've never in my life seen someone become a flat earther and say, yeah, don't feel like arguing it. So she went up, sat down in front of her whole family. She said, the earth is flat. You guys are all crazy. And then they start asking questions. It's like, I don't feel like explaining it. And she just chilled the fuck out. And I'm thinking to myself like, whoa, this family's going to stab me. And then she turns around and says, uh, Joseph Smith's a Freemason, according to my boyfriend. And the mom, it literally already hates me. And I was like, bro, this is like those movies. This is like a Disney movie. This is like horrible, dude. And... I remember we argued. She's like, what do you want me to do? Lie? I'm like, if your mom's crying... Then lie. <laughs> She's fucking crying, bro. What the fuck? Like, it's not that big of a deal. Also, you none of you guys are allowed to be Freemasons. So not Freemasons. You're not allowed to be flat earthers and say, I don't want to argue for it. You know what I mean? That's retarded as fuck. John, you know you're being paid for bullshit content. I think I might be the most real influencer that has ever existed because I dedicated a year to content that doesn't pay me. I can't stop talking about this stuff. God is great. I'm trying to snap out of it. I'm trying to get back to work. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Mormonism. Here, look, if you have if you're having trouble with the fucking retarded Gnostic texts, those Gnostic texts that say Jesus is Satan and blah blah blah, you gotta remember there are no satanic billionaires conjuring up Jesus. Go read their texts. Whether a hundred years ago or thousands of years ago, whatever you read, nobody conjures up Jesus Christ to do demonic shit. Nobody does that. They actually do the opposite. They'll bring crosses in to spit on them and shit. What do you think of Knights of Templar? So Knights of Templar are the highest levels in Freemasonry. And they were actually the first Gnostics who learned from Easterners that uh, they were convinced when they were out uh, conquering new lands, all that shit. Well, Knights of Templar were really protecting a lot of these uh, people who would go uh, spread, the, uh, spread Christ's message. And so they went far east and some mystics said, Hey, you Christians... You Knights of Templar, you don't know your own God. And they were like shocked with how smart these old sages were, right? That's where the word saint comes from, the sage. And these sages were like, why would God say knowledge is bad? The serpent is your God. And the Knights of Templar were literally like, Ezio, Altair. This motherfucker's onto something. And the sage is just trying to subvert the fucking church. And they went into hiding because the fucking king was so based. The popes used to be so based. The pope was like, 
What did you say? God is the serpent? Off with all their heads. And started cutting all their fucking heads off. And everyone's like, holy shit. All the Knights of Templar went underground with Ezio Altair and the Assassin's Creed. And they're like, dude, we can't tell people that we worship the serpent. And they're connected to Ophites and Canaanites and serpent, early serpent worshippers of the first century AD. And so they studied it underground. And what they learned quickly is that they were more powerful than Christians. Because if you want to be next in line for the throne, you got to kill your brother. So when you don't walk with God, that becomes easier, right? So power came to them quick, and they started taking over the game. And uh, that's how they infiltrated the beautiful Catholics. And um, what else do you want me to say about them? If you think the serpent is bad, then you're just... What? If you think the serpent... If... Hey, Ink Bites, he says, Red Ink says, Ink Bites. If you think the serpent is bad, then you are just a Talmud cock reader. The serpent is king and the key for us. Okay, that's a Freemason in chat. 100%. Another thing is, in the Talmud... They don't say the serpent is good or bad. They say anything God makes is good, right? That all evil co comes from good. Therefore, all evil is also good. And so, some Talmudic uh, scholars would also say um, good comes from evil. right? If you do enough evil, you can get good out of it. But uh, some people have argued that that's just cope and shit like that. And uh, yeah. I'm too Chad to know all this shit. I'm like practicing what I remember. I'm fucking crush, crushing it right now. John Zerga, you actually believe that Talmud is telling the true story of the serpent? What? No. You have to go deeper in your thinking. Why the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil is bad, is because children are innocent. Now check this out. Knowledge, gnosis, curiosity, you're saying is a good thing. You're saying knowledge is a good thing, right? You don't want to just be a nice, innocent farmer with your wife and kids. You want to be knowledgeable. You want to be a genius. Knowledge is the pedophile's religion. Because there's nothing more curious than a man that looks at a little child and says, I wonder what it's like to fuck. Right? So that's... It's like addiction to biting from the apple of uh, knowledge. So you got to think about like where this leads if you think knowledge is the end-all, be-all. You understand? The goodness is the end-all, be-all. You want to be good. Even if you're just some retarded farmer with a family, you want to be good. That's the genius. Because the genius is not Steve Jobs. The genius is the man who lives 99, year, 99 years on earth with peace of mind and low stress. Uh, like, think about Kanye, right? People say he's a genius and stuff, but he doesn't even have his wife and kids. And he suffers just like a broke dude at the club that sees his wife who had his child twerking on some random dude. And he's like, that's not my wife anymore. That's just some... You know what I mean? Like, Kanye has peasant problems. 
like poor people problems and he's a billionaire. He has the worst ones because the whole world is watching. They're actually magnified. You got to ask yourself, like, this genius thing. Like, why do you value it that much? Like, when I'm with my nephew and we're just playing around, I turn off my brain and I just play with my nephew. Because I know the true genius is going to have these moments. They're going to do the right thing. Right? You're a stressed out genius. That's like your whole reality is stressed out, bro. That's like you're a retard. You know what I mean? You guys are running out of time on earth. If you guys had Ferraris, you'd be stressed. You know what I mean? It's like not even the devil's material world would fix you. If you want to be less stressed in life, be more primitive. The philosophers kill themselves. You know, knowledge is not what you think it is. Mm. Smart people get very depressed. Mm. Like, we all have this fat, retard friend who loves Warhammer. Thinking of Ray. Shout out Ray. And his life is all oh, new Marvel Cinematic movie. Oh, some Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, Iron Man. Oh, Warhammer. Oh, Gundam. And then just like, oh, we're going to get some fucking uh, taquitos. Uh, we're going to get some hot and spicy wings. And then you're like, yo, this is like my dumb friend who doesn't really read any mystical texts. But are they dumb? Because their whole life is kind of like stress-free. And I'm the one like aging and killing myself thinking too much. So I'm like, is his baby like mine? Is that the stupid mind? How is that the stupid mind? I'm the one suffering. I can't even solve my own suffering. This guy's, This guy's on autopilot, not suffering. You know what I mean? So sometimes I go like, whoa, dude, a lot of life is becoming more primitive. Like, what was I like before puberty? I gotta go back to play, bro. Mm, you're supposed to suffer in life for that. Listen, dude, the point of life is to reduce your suffering, okay? Like, serve God, but you're doing that as you're reducing your suffering because dude there's something weird happening to the world man i remember when i asked my dad i'm like hey did you ever see anything like covid where they lock down the world and my dad's like nope and then you know how dads usually say things like yes son like they know everything my dad's just like nope and i was like huh so what, am I born in the wrong time? And my dad's like, yeah, I guess. And then he's like, stop coping and shit. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, why am I born in the weirdest time ever, bro? Like, end times? No, knowledge is cope, right? Knowledge is the retarded cousin of faith. That's what I say, right? Sometimes you seek knowledge because you lack faith in God. You know, but like some dairy farmer, they don't lack faith. They're just chilling. Yeah. Knowledge and reason is how you have gotten to your conclusion and God, therefore the serpent is good for you. You're fucking retarded because 
it's me coping, bro. If someone's talking about God every day, they're still struggling with faith. Actually, every day, you, I feel like every day we wake up as atheists. You know, I swear I've, every morning I gotta, I gotta like go through who I am. And it's like, man, I wish it was on autopilot sometimes. A retard just reads the Bible and goes, oh my fucking God. Nephilim and giants. Wow, this is real. You know what I mean? A retard. A retard can just fucking absorb that shit. And then people are like me are like, oh, the Bible's not enough. I need to do a thousand pages of uh, Freemasonry just to find out what the opposing team is 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 looking into. And it's like, dude, this is not paying me. This is taking a lot of time. And it's making me fucking... I'm a dude talking to my phone for hours. I'm losing my mind, bro. That's why when I organize it into a documentary, I'll finally see my thoughts and I'll be like, relief. You know? Mm. Knowledge is king. Dude, you know every famous philosopher throughout history said, don't think so much. Like, you'd think they'd say, hey, I did it, so you do it too. But they're really telling you, like, I suffered, bro. You know what I mean? Like, they tell you to chill the fuck out. Uh, Freud and Jung both talk about something interesting. How humans try and master everything except the peaceful parts of their day. So they end up killing themselves. And I'm like, what the fuck? Apparently, you have to master learning how to take a walk or play with your son or enjoy a bagel or a joke with your wife. Apparently, you have to practice that shit because it could just zoom by you. Like, be in the moment and shit. And I was like, why aren't these geniuses talking about... I thought they were going to tell me, like, you got to do a thousand push-ups, you got to do this... They're literally talking about the most boring parts of the day, like walking by a flower, like the gayest shit ever. Or looking at a painting and going, hmm. And I'm like, why are they talking about the most boring shit? Like, where's the fucking, adv where's the base advice? Where's the agitated advice? But really what they're talking about is, right? They're talking about you never have peace of mind because you never practiced it. Like, you're going to fucking kill yourself, bro. It's bad. Even when I go for a walk, I go, I forgot my music. I forgot my headphones. I forgot this. Dude, you're supposed to just walk. And if I'm walking, I'm like, am I breathing right? Am I congested? Why is my heart at that rate? I'm like thinking. And I'm like, damn, I got to learn how to walk like a baby, like a child. Like I just got to walk. I have to master relieving tension correctly. And now I realize, no shit, I've been doing everything wrong. Every time I got my headphones to go for a walk, boom, 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 it would be hard style, pounding against my ears. And I'm like, no shit, I'm never calming down. Like, I don't do anything to calm down. I'm like failing at calming down. I don't want to fucking strangle myself where I go, I'm 28 and I'm realizing this. Bro, this is stuff you should know at 15 years old, bro. And you know what's funny? Even if I do it without music, right? I always grab the headphones in case I change my mind. That's retarded. How can you change your mind from a peaceful walk? But I always have to, ah, fuck it, just in case. Dude, the walk is supposed to be thoughtless. You're supposed to recharge with this walk. Right? Like the kid doesn't look, oh, where are my headphones? Where's my iPad? They just all see some green grass and they walk and run around it. And, and they're more primitive. And then I, you know, I have to be like that if I want to be less stressed this year.
You know what I mean? It's like we carry our gayest thoughts with us throughout all day. And we autopilot the fun parts of our day. You know, like people are gaming, but they're not gaming. They're autopiloting. You know what gaming is? Try playing Valorant after 10 years in prison. You'll fucking enjoy that game. You'll be so in the fucking moment. But dude, I'm droning if I'm gaming. Like I'm, I'm not even there. I'm like just a zombie. And then I go, fuck, dude, what a waste of time. Gotta be in this moment. You said every time you are in Walmart and hear children crying, you understand Moloch more. Can you explain? Yeah, because you see, when you sacrifice children of Moloch and pass them through the flames, they beat the drums. Boom, 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 loud, so you can't hear the kids screaming as they burn to death. And uh, it, it brings power to you, that ritual, right? That's what the elites do. And um, what it was a joke, like, I don't want to hear the kid crying, as in throw the kid in fire, but it's a joke about murdering children. I'm not going to lie, one time I had a flight to Oregon. <laughs> this is the fucking most evil shit I'm going to say because they're such nice people. But I was panicking because I was off like five flights trying to get home. 2022, I think. And I just sleep in the midst. This airport doesn't even have corners where you can <laughs> like, you know how people sleep in corners of airports? It doesn't. It's just a hallway that people, right? So I was like walking forever. I'm like, damn. There's nowhere to lay down. I just need a few hours sleep. So I just laid down in the middle of the hallway. And people would walk over me. Right? And I just slept in the middle of the fucking hallway. And then I woke up and I'm like, fuck, I'm going to be late and stuff like that. I took a flight. I forgot where I was going. But anyways, let's say I was going to Portland, right? Yeah, I was going to Oregon, Portland to catch my other flight back home to Van. And I'm panicking this big airport. I forgot which airport, but it's big. And I don't know where it is. And my, I'm so tired and I'm confused. And I look at my ticket. And I, I, you know, I've done a thousand flights. I should know this by now. This gate, where is this gate? And then I said, stop looking for numbers. You're going to miss your flight. You have five minutes left. Focus. Where are the ugliest people in this airport? Boom. Within two seconds. I look at this group of disgusting, such sweet, nice people, but disgusting people. And I just went right to them. And I said, imagine if I'm correct, how hard I'm going to laugh. And then they looked at me like I'm the joker. I, I was wheezing laughing when it was the correct gate from like 10, 20 gates for, to choose from. And I made it on the flight. And I remember sitting on the plane feeling so ashamed because they were so nice to me. I was like, Dude, I kind of found you guys as like... Because I knew from all these gates, Portland got to be the ugliest, like the most lib. <laughs> but I still remember, I'm like, you know, you talk to yourself in your head. I'm like, that's got to be the funniest thing I've ever done in my life that's not on camera. And why am I saying this? How did I get here? I forgot what I was saying. Oh, right. The baby thing. Yeah, the there there's a baby on the plane behind me and the baby cried for like four hours straight non-stop the first time i've seen a baby not stop cry for four hours and it was the first time i actually had thoughts of like you know i'm never in my i hate those guys who complain like bro it's a baby just don't complain bro you know i'm not gonna complain kids cry but that to me i've never had a baby sit directly next to me right here crying for four hours that was the first time in my life I thought, like, you know, I wish Muhammad Atta's, uh, I, think, I hope it's his turn to fly the fucking plane. I want to give him his coffee and wake him up. And, 
I'm kidding. Look, I, I want to I say I'm kidding so I don't get bad, but Osama's hookah is laughing in the chat. Right? So it's like, I can't avoid this ban if it happens, right? Like, I'm worried Twitch is going to email me saying, like, yo, you can't do any more Muhammad Atta jokes. And I'll be like, okay, I don't want to be partnered anymore. Because, like, people tune in for this part. <sighs> Anyways, what was I saying? God murdering babies. What else do I talk about here? I don't know. What separates you from an animal? Intellect and knowledge. No, there's one more thing, right? Soul. Because think of um, think of someone who uh, is in a coma, right? No intellect, right? They're not doing anything. Are they more important than a fucking pig? And then ask yourself, why do you think that? Yes, they're more important because they have a soul. believe we're made in the image of God yes or no yes I do Okay, they're quoting Osama bin Laden in chat. Like the real Osama. God seems to have a lot of faces. Okay, you guys are just stupid. Focus on... Let's just go to Plato right now. Plato talks about a chair. What is a chair? Is it a fucking beanbag? Is it a four, four-legged chair? Is it a bar stool? We don't know. We just know everyone's thinking of a fucking chair. It doesn't, we don't know how many legs a chair has, but it it adheres to a perfect form of a chair. That perfect form is in all of our heads, but we don't know what the fuck a chair is. But we all know in our heads what the fuck a chair is. Right? Is it a love seat? Is it a sofa? Is it, what is it? Same thing with being made in the image of God. Right? Like we all adhere to a perfect image. We are not the perfect image. Yeah. Does that make sense? To me, that makes a lot of that's genius level to me what I just did. Yeah, it's mid, actually. Mm, how do you think God will reward Palestinians for resisting occupation of their land? I don't actually talk about God rewarding certain people and stuff because I find that satanic, bro. Like, when people say to me, yo, I got an A in my test because God is rewarding me, I go, uh-oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, I don't see it like that, you know. Mm. 
It's going to sound weird, but sometimes I think focusing on God can be unhealthy. For me, it's a lot more healthy to focus on um, demons. Because like, I battle with them. Even in the invisible world, they affect the material world. My impulses and my choices. I think focusing on evil is a lot less stressful than focusing on God, right? I feel like people who focus on God too much are trying to outsmart God. You know what I mean? It's like, well, why would God do this if God did that? And it's like, bro, you're a fucking ant. Like, stop asking the question. You know your battle is against these demons. Like, get to work. Go to war, bro. Yeah. Like, it sounds satanic to say, but it's, like, really not. Demons, evil, murderers, and rapists get me closer to God than anything. I can't explain to you why I'm obsessed with learning about evil. I just can't... I can't break that down correctly, dude. can never explain it without sounding really fucking evil. You know what I mean by that? No. No, you don't get possessed by accident, dude. You do a contract. You know why demons ask you for these soul contracts? Because they're actually afraid. Like, they see you as God's property. That's why they say, hey, you want to do a deal? We can renegotiate. I can get you rich these two years, but then you're going to have bad mental health from this OnlyFans, and you're going to try and harm yourself. Like, they got to ask you for the contract. They they can't just run up into you. They always got to sneak in because they're like, oh, fuck, bro. I don't know. Yeah, it's always a contract. Have you ever commit evil by accident? It's rare. It's never. Have they ever asked you? Yes. Why would I talk about every day if I'm not shook? You think Andrew Tate made contact with a demon? Yeah, I think Andrew Tate suffers with uh, pride a lot. Where, like, Tristan tries to save his life and says, don't trust this vice rat. And then Andrew Tate's like, I'm the genius, I got us here. And it's like, dude, Tristan's radar is pretty strong for sniffing out a fucking rat. But he will just always big brother it out of pride. And it's like, dude, Tristan is more sound because he's not in the limelight. He's not affected as hard. You can see Tristan's mind is closer to what he used to be before fame than where Andrew is. Andrew is completely, I was right about everything, you know? The ego is unreal right now. I never attack ego. This is the first time I've ever attacked someone's ego. But I'm like, you have a good example of someone who's dealing with the fame better. And it's your brother. Right? That's why I turned to my brother. I was like, but when I pop off, I turn to my brother. Because I go, oh, he's going to be way closer to reality than me. You know what I mean? Also, my family, we respect what the oldest brother will say. But we'll never... Um... We'll never fuck our lives up just because he says something. Like if the youngest in my family says something wise, 
The older ones actually listen. We don't have a pride issue where we're like, no, you're the younger brother. I'm not going to listen to you. No, if you say some fucking coherent shit, my family will take it. And I feel like Tristan's and Andrew, it's almost like he's not allowed to listen to Tristan. You know what I mean? Uh, without knowledge and reason, we would be on the level of dumb fuck animals. The Jews want you to be animalistic cattle. Like, what are you fucking talking about? First of all, look at the order of the Illuminati 1700s. That is a Gentile movement of white guys. They believe in the same shit. So it's like, you're schizo posting at this point. Mm. Also, another thing, every philosopher knew this, knowledge and reason is not for the masses. It can't even be pushed for the masses. The masses are retarded. Like, if there's no philosopher who ever said, it's good to be knowledgeable, and they're talking to everyone. They know who they're talking to. It's their fucking disciples. Nobody's talking to the fucking McDonald's workers. Okay, and that's the sad truth about society. Bro, some people just... I, well, I saw something on Twitter that... There's people in society who cannot hear their own thoughts. Like, they don't have internal dialogues. They have to say it out loud. They, they don't have a voice in their head. I, I said that's 100% bullshit too, Kev. I said the same shit. I'm like, there's no... I know they're dumb, but there's no... How would you get anything done if you're not talking to yourself throughout the day? What? Like, there's no way. And, I, and then I felt kind of crazy because I'm like, not only do I have an internal dialogue, but I still out loud talk to myself. <laughs> I'm double. I'm double genius, bro. <sighs> No, if that's true, if that's true that there's humans without the voice, without hearing themselves, I get without that dialogue, if that's true, then I don't want to live on Earth anymore. That's the saddest shit of that. You mean there's bus drivers who don't hear themselves think? Yeah, I think I'm done, bro. That's terrifying. Where did I see that? You know, I know I'm going to regret saying this because like this opens up a can of worms and stuff. But dude, autism comes from vaccines. I didn't say it, bro. Fucking scientists said it in the 90s. I didn't say it. I just read it. I'm reading right now. I have a computer screen in front of me. But there was like that Vietnam thing where it's like before and after. And then, then autism boomed. I just read it. I don't know what I believe. I just read it somewhere. Okay, here's my argument. Here's my autism argument, okay? Should I just go full base? Should I just wake up? Hmm. Okay, here it goes. 
Why there is no women who are autistic is because it's a war on men. Ah! Don't do it. I mean, bro, it's fucking, they're targeting us, man. Don't do it. Don't. They're fucking targeting men, dude. <clears throat> There's a hundred percent autistic chicks. No, that's just a woman. No, but uh, now there is like a couple autistic chicks. Growing up, there was zero. Just do you guys, anyone nineteen ninety four remember autistic chicks? Like I've never. Um. I. I n- Women have a dissociate issue. They can dissociate. They can, they can kind of like, through traumas, have certain problems. But they don't have that antisocial autistic thing. Like there's only autistic men. They're very, or maybe it's harder to see in a woman because they're so socially calibrated. Like they, they're really good at that. No, no, Bill's really good with sarcasm and shit like that. But men who are autistic, they just can't... uh... Sometimes I think Destiny could be a bit autistic because he's... Like, he doesn't know when you're being sarcastic with him. You know what I mean? But I don't know. Maybe it's because he's on guard talking to a troll. I don't think Destiny is, no. Hassan Piker, I've definitely 100% thought there's something autistic about Hassan because I was like, why does he keep intentionally like looking stupid, not understanding, reading the room? And then, oh, maybe he has an issue. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to lie to you. It's like a lot of Twitch streamers and stuff. I can just see them in the special class. I can just squint my eyes and be like, yeah, I can see. Hey, Lakari and hey, everyone. You know what I mean? Like, I started chilling with influencers and I'm like, huh. There's a lot of autistic influencers that I just. Sometimes it like passes my radar. But then, like, over time, I go, whoa. You doing Lakari like that? I see Lakari with a little helmet. <laughs> you want to hear something crazy? What I used to watch for content was a mad scientist named JF debate with destiny but the debate gets interrupted by a woman he allegedly kidnapped who has autism severe autism but he's trying to procreate with her because his life mission is to have a sex with as many women as possible and pass his seed in genetics because he doesn't believe in god but he's very right wing and believes in uh evolution And he got fired from being a genetics professor at a nice uni for some sexual thing with a student. And you think this is fan fiction. It's Google JF vs. Destiny debate. This guy's a real character. He met Trainwreck, actually. And he insulted Train, and Train called him ugly as fuck. Dude, when people are like, what do you watch? What did you watch on YouTube? I'm like, I watched fucked up shit, bro. I watched a lot of fucked up shit, dude. That's why I went to God. Because I was like, whoa, everyone I watch is fucked up. Yeah. But that's not a random thought. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I wouldn't be surprised if 35% of men are autistic. 35 is a huge number. I wouldn't be that surprised. Something's... uh Something's in the water. (laughs) 
Mm. Yeah. You know, fluoride is real. Like, it's not a meme. It's like a real issue. <laughs> Who's your favorite character in the Matrix? John, Neo, or Morpheus? Mm. I like Morpheus better. Because, look, you know what I don't like about The Matrix is it's not like an esoteric movie about Christ or the chosen one or it's about being born as a generic white guy. Like when you're the generic white guy, you can do anything. <laughs> That's what Neo is. <laughs> you can break the matrix if you're born as a generic white guy. You could just have a Fortune 500 company and be unstoppable. Right? Neo isn't white. I'm pretty sure Keanu Reeves is white. I don't always talk about IQ. IQ is retarded. Like, if you have a high IQ, but you're broke, miserable, and trying to fucking harm yourself, I'd say, hey, nice test score. <laughs> no. That's not how I measure intelligence. Intelligence just means what you made with the cards you're dealt, right? Like, if you had a dad who, let's say, raped you with a pogo stick for 20 years of your life, and then you turn out to be, like, Steve Jobs, then I'd say, oh, shit, you're, like, the most intelligent because you got dealt the worst hand but made the best hand out of it. But if you got like $10 million from your dad and now you have $11 million, then I go, okay, like, what did you do, bro? Like, how are you intelligent? Yeah. Or if you're a bouncer, like, you know, there's no bounce on the internet that changed their life. It's just me and Jones. Totally different lives. Totally different place now. I don't believe in IQ like that. What the fuck? No amount of knowledge will save you from judgment. Yes, faith will. Faith is the opposite of knowledge. Mm. What is hope, chat? Hope is a waking dream. John, you have too many yes men in your chat. Dude, anyone who says, yo, bro, you've got, you're surrounded by yes men. Like, I, any person who says, dude, you're surrounded by yes men, what they're really saying is, dude, you, like, need me to succeed. Like, I'm your one shot. Like, I'm that special someone you should build with, John. And it's so gay, bro. It's like, every time I hear, you got a party. You see, like, let's say Logan Paul, and then dude tries to sell them a beanbag. Hey, I'm Mike Malak. And then he goes, bro, you're surrounded by yes men. You, like, just need someone to tell you straight up the truth. And then Mike Malak becomes his best friend and changes, you know, his whole life changes because of it. Like, dude, I've never seen someone in good faith say, yo, you're surrounded by yes men. It's always they want something from the guy they're saying it to. 
right? Knowledge is stronger than faith. No, it's not. If you get punched by a dude who knows how to punch, you can be knocked out, right? Let's say there's two boxers. You're fighting two boxers. And one just knows more about punching biomechanics. He does not punch harder than the guy who has faith in his punch. Like that guy knocks you the fuck out. That guy got retard straight. You know what I mean? If you're facing two boxers, who are you trying to fight, bro? <clears throat> Is hot and cold approach ultimate risk to keep a girl... No, because that solves their boredom. But the ultimate way to keep a woman is have your own apartment with a hundred thousand dollars paycheck a year and a good social group like friends. Then her your friends become her friends. So basically you changed her whole life, every angle, and then she can't live without you. So everyone who's ever taken a woman from you, they hit those three components and they hit them hard. Like you, you haven't lost women in your life to people better than you, right? Because a lot of those guys would rent a nice apartment and they're broke as fuck, but they'd get girls and stuff. And it was like an illusion. And the girl would just, this is the most satanic thing I'm going to say, Okay. But if you give a woman an illusion for, let's say, six months, let's say you date a girl six months and you give her an illusion of a good life, that bitch will downgrade with you. Once she gets used to you, it's like you won. If you have Riz, like if you know what you're doing. But like... Like, let's say I have a fucking penthouse and I get her, some girl to live with me in the penthouse and I fuck her and I stay with her for six months. And then I say, hey, yo, actually, we're going to go into a fucking tiny apartment on the first floor outside of town. I don't got money for this penthouse. She's not going anywhere. She doesn't go look for another dude with a penthouse. She's literally, your, she's like, follows you around for life. You understand? If you have Riz, I mean. Like a lot of people think it's like, it, why this is satanic to say is because that's what, that's where tricking comes from. You know, when men trick on a bitch, because it works. Like when, when you become a part of her life, she doesn't want to leave. So tricking does work on a bitch. It doesn't work on hookers and strippers, but it works on women for sure. And women know when you're tricking. Like, they know you don't got fucking millions of shit. Yeah. But they like, cope. So, yeah. Like, your goal isn't really to show her a good time. Your goal is to show her a life without you. Right? You just show her that door, and she goes, I don't want to go through that door. So, yeah. Like, if you want a cheat code for a woman to follow you for life, have funny friends. Like, if, bro, I remember this one chick years ago. I just introduced her to Brad Needin, and I took her fucking, we went to, like, a cabin thing. And she had so much fun, she was traumatized when we broke up. Because she was like, we're breaking up all three of us, right? Or four of us. 
And so, like, having a good social network is OP with that shit. Hmm. I can't bond with women, he says. Hmm. One day a woman will show you a reflection of your younger self, and then you'll bond with her. So, eventually you will bond, you just keep going. Should I just leave some fucking retards in chat, bro? I, was I talking to dumbasses this whole night? What a waste of time. I just read like 10 messages and I'm like, this is the worst chat I've ever had. Actual retards, man. I don't see any chats like this and they're all... They're all like fighting for who's the funniest. It's like, dude, it's been an it's been three hours, nobody's laughed, bro. Have you guys laughed at any of the chatters? Like their little like jokes and stuff? I don't think I laughed once with chat today. And they're just, like trying hard with the jokes. I didn't even do like a fake like <laughs> nice one. Jeez, am I carrying this one? Usually chat's funny, bro. This is a weird old crowd. I've been preaching. You're scared to confront it. All right, preach. What am I supposed to confront? Oh, the copy pasta guy's back, bro. I'm not reading that, man. Should we perma ban him? Did you sell your soul to DK? Is that like funny to someone? Yeah, okay. I thought someone's laughing at those guys' copy pasta. I, I thought I. I thought it would be annoying for me, but someone got to fucking read that and say, oh, that's amusing. But if you want to ban that, I'm so down. It was never funny to me. I was like, just doing it for you guys, bro. 
Charles Ergo, what is up with the Red Hood? Look, now, now this is some Eyes Wide Shut conspiracy, bro. It's a hoodie. Like, get over it. What the fuck is going on? John, I have studied your game with girls. Damn, you know a lot. Bro, women are retarded, man. It's like the fucking easiest thing. Bro, sometimes... I remember when I was younger, I'd be like... Is she sucking my dick after like 10 minutes of meeting me? What the fuck did I even say? Like, this has got to be the... There's no way... That most people are lonely in life. Like, this has got to be the easiest game on earth. <sighs> Here's the best way to getting any girl to want to fuck you. Just tell the truth. You know, like, most... M most men lie to women and they they go oh lying works with women right but lying doesn't work that's why you guys are coping if you just tell them the truth you sound like they that you literally sound like their dad right you go, hey, I, don't, I don't think you should do that whole shit and then they get wet They're like yeah my dad doesn't like me being a hoe either john it's like, no, I don't care if you're a hoe. I'm just saying that so you get wet. So I'm trying to, I'm RPing as your dad. <laughs> yeah. People only tell half the truth and they'd be like, truth doesn't work. And bro, tell the full truth and she'll get wet, right? Like, when a girl is coming, nothing makes her come more than when the guy's like role playing, you dirty bitch. But if you won't really want her to come, nothing will make her not more than you meaning it. <laughs> you know, like if you mean it. Dog from Park says, with the back of your hand. That's who's in chat today. Dog from Park. I think I saw you today. Oh, Lord, bro. It's just not working for me. Now, don't make a woman nut, bro. Every time a woman nuts, demonic portals are opened in the world. Like, if I'm making a woman nut, I go, stop that. Get some help. Stop nutting. You know what I mean? Why does a girl with sexual trauma from her childhood try to live that again in adulthood? Yes. Why she wants to live it again? One is it's a control thing. Oh, I can have control over my sexuality if I master it and experience a lot of it. And two, she feels that's what she deserves. Right? Right? She goes, oh, well, since I was touched as a kid, clearly I'm a bad person. And it's just dramatic thinking, right? Yeah. Hey, you want to hear something crazy that no woman will admit? Did you know, like, 80% of women get touched as children and teens? And a lot of them just don't say it, like... You know those liberal studies that's like crazy and you don't believe them? That one's actually true. It's kind of crazy, like. Eighty percent laugh my ass off. Yeah, right. 
Yeah, no, it's it's way higher than 80. I'm coping. A lot of them deal with it better, I guess. Okay, just close your eyes and imagine, bro, millions of people bought bad babies only fans when she turned legal age billions of people are pedophiles women grow up around pedos okay and not just pedos pedos in despair that don't have wives don't have anyone dude women get touched growing up they just don't talk about it but they all get touched boys get touched a lot but like girls yeah, they get touched, bro. They get fractured. Uh. Mm hmm. Should I just go, bro? This fucking chat sucks. I mean, it was supposed to be like a 10-minute stream. I guess we did four hours, but this beanbag is nice, man. Random dude in chat I've never seen said, chill, don't go, I'm here. How did you fix anything? I said, you're not even typing anything. I'm not fucking holding a phone in front of my face anymore, dude. Hell no, bro. I got nothing out of this. This stream sucked, bro. This is like the biggest way. I could have done so many things. This is such a waste of time. This has got to be the shittiest stream ever. I feel that I feel like I showed up to do the project and nobody did anything. One. One in the chat if you guys are going to hell. I'm turning it off really quick now. Ooh, that delay. Oh no. Oh. oh. Wait, what's Haz's hot mic moment? What did I miss? Is that why you got banned? I go to bed, bro. Oh, Rumble? No. I got a film, bro. I need to sleep in that film. I thought talking to you guys would take my mind off my hunger, but like, I can't even order food, bro. I'm so hungry. You believe in black magic? Yeah, just the uh, black magician. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Can someone bring me some food.
sleep streams now. Hey, Chad. You little ugly little fuckers. I don't, to, I don't forget to watch my episode on D. Kane's channel. They're going to interview me on their podcast. And, uh... Someone bring me some food. I used to open the oven and there was always food. Now, every time I open the oven, I, I don't make jokes like that. Listen, I'm so hungry. I need like a burger. I need a burger. God damn. Dude, these teeth are OP, man. When did I become so good looking? How do they say money don't buy happiness, man? Money buy sick teeth. I think I'm the only one on this website who bought teeth. Everyone else looks disgusting. Mm. Shiny teeth that sparkle Just like the stars in space Man, a buck Fucking bucked out I have the most expensive skull on this website <coughs> Wish I could go back in time I used to work three jobs I would have got the teeth done when I'm 20 years old I don't think I don't think it's worth it this much, but it's so worth it. You know what I mean? I'm being big. Mm. Hmm. OP as hell, dude. I'm 
I'm a good looking guy with these teeth. Uh, these teeth are so It's like a castle. Hmm. Chad hates these teeth. Since day one, you guys hated them. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why? I can't. I'd be, I'm like those, uh, I look like, uh, Vegito when he's mad. He says, yo, I'm killing you on Rumble. I said, oh, yo, I'm killing you on Rumble. What the fuck? Is that true, Haas? Shit. I might have to start rumbling sometime. the theme of this stream the theme of this stream is always the same locker room talk a little sus vibes and hating on chat Circa, you got braces in the past. No way they were this aligned. <laughs> yeah, bro, I got braces on for like 24 hours. You see, when you understand Freemasonry, you can just change your teeth structure. Mm -hmm. Bro, they're porcelain, dude. Like... <laughs> fuck are you talking about that's not what a tooth is made out of these are diamonds <laughs> I used to see Trump smile and Trump was like and I was like damn bro how much does that cost? Mm. No, they're my real teeth. I didn't replace my teeth. I would never do that because I have such good teeth. Healthy. I'm from Kosovo, Chakova city. My Albanian family is watching you. Don't watch me when I don't have content, man. I'm fucking... Oh, I don't mean to curse. I'm, uh... We're j Bro, we're talking about nothing. This has got to be the worst channel to tune into. <laughs> Usually I have podcasts, shows, guests. Jimmy Kimmel type shit. I have good shit going on. Yeah, who saw Fallon dancing? COVID-19. What the hell was that about?
Finally, an Albanian who's a flat. Every Albanian I see that's that hears the words flat earth tries to stab me. Like they hate it. It's very base to you guys. Say something. Your mom's a whore. Shh. That's my day off, bro. Long day, Lois. Not good, I'm just flexing these new teeth. I have your nudes and I want one thousand dollars. Roy should leak them. No, I don't do phone calls with chatters or VC with chatters. Uh, chatters are stupid people. You know how fucking stupid you have to be to be a chatter, bro. The one time I understood chat was the, that last year, because I was like, there's actually no content. There's like nothing to watch. I caught myself watching Impulsive offline. I was like, oh my God, I must be bored. That's crazy. <sighs> Damn, you got some big lips. Are you part black? What? It's been hours, bro. Stop it. Bro, it was funny. The first hour of gay shit was funny, but it's been hours, dude. Just rub it out. <laughs> Do 
you want to see my progress pics. Okay, we're done here. Fuck this shit.